Welcome to the 3 POA podcast, episode five, talking about the book of Boba Fett tonight and our five favorite collection editions of 2021. How are you guys doing? What's up, Tony? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's um, it's the 2nd of January here, so um, yeah. but I want to wish everyone a very happy new year. Um, best wishes for the future. I hope 2022 sees you... Uh, Rolling in fortune and good health, especially Valiverse. <laughs> dude, you're, dude, you're in the future. Like, you're actually in the future. I know. What's it like? Yeah. You, learn, you learn this technique in the Special Forces. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Bobby? What's going on, man? Busy week? Uh, it's busy week, man. Busy week. It's been a, it's been a busy couple months. Uh, at least a, a damn busy month, that's for sure. Um, well, no rest for the weary man. We we got all of series one out the door, and now shit, everything went back up for, for pre order, and series one went back up for sale. So it's like Monday morning, I'm gonna be back here fulfilling orders again. So, uh, you know, I, I took a couple of days to uh get on top of some uh some work that I'd been pushing off, working on some new figure designs, uh, nice. possibly someone new coming to Action Force, but um. Yeah, it's been it's been good, man. I'm looking forward to uh, to the new year and uh, everything else that's coming. Well, I'm just glad your internet connection is good. Uh, <laughs> kind of a thing this week. I, huh? I literally check it like a hundred times every time we, we get on a podcast. That's why, like, when we're in the green room, I'm like, "Is my connection good? Am I good? Am I, am I blurry? Am I, you know?" Yeah, you guys had a little bit of hiccups on day one of the sale, but by day two, it was like. Smooth sailing. It was good to go. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, you know, it, it was kind of one of those things where uh, I would, you know, I was talking to my web guy, and you know, I said, I said, listen, all the all the updates went really smooth, just because we had to. It wasn't like your normal like e commerce store. I had series one, two A, two B. You couldn't order them together. There was a lot of like tricky things to work out, and I said all that kind of went really smooth. I said. Something's gonna happen. The website's gonna crash or something like that. I kind of, I kind of felt it. Like I felt something a brewing, and uh, and you know, it got it got bombarded, and it was handling the traffic fine. And then, based on what you know, the my hosting uh, tech was telling me, he was like, the the traffic was fine, handling it fine, because you know it handled it fine afterwards. He was like, you got hit with like a rush of bots that just like ate away at like, you know, the, 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 the connection, the server. And, uh, we had to kind of go through and clean all those out and put in some plugins in place to, to deter those. So we did. And luckily it was only a, a small hiccup. And then listen, man, I check my phone constantly and orders have not stopped. Like even like when I wake up the next morning, there are hundreds of orders like that just come in overnight. And it's like, I'm not doing international shipping. So these are people just in the U S that are just buying overnight, which is wild. Um, so you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for supporting the brand. I'm glad that like everyone's excited for it and, you know, to see it all, uh, being so successful is man, it's, it's a kind of a, you know, a dream come true. It makes all the, all the hard work like worth it. You know, it, it's kind of, kind of paid off and, 
man, I'm so psyched to get Series 2 here. It's going to be awesome, especially with how quickly it's going to get here. Like, that's the cool part. Nice. Yeah, exciting. I'm just wondering how how many people on New Year's Eve were making drunk purchases and they're sitting there on New Year's Day (laughs) trying to explain to the wife why they've just dumped $300 or more action wars figures. Well, we'll see. I have to check. uh, I'm a little behind on checking the emails, you know, family time and New Year's Eve and stuff like that, but... May I have to see if anyone sent messages like, oh, I made that purchase while I was drunk. Uh, can I actually order more? <laughs> <laughs> Need uh, three, four, five more stormtroopers. Listen, man, I, I've done my fair share of, uh, of, of drunk purchases, so I know all about that. Yeah. So you regret them in a until the, the order actually gets to you, and then you're like, oh, I actually don't regret that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I placed my order for for two A, and now I'm. I saw your post on Instagram of rollout, and I was like, "Damn, I need two of those." So, do we I just a, place another place another order and have you add it to it? I uh, just email orders at valiverse.com, Tony. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Before, hold on, because before you get upset that Tony's an Australian, he placed an order. I'm holding his order and giving it to him at Joe Fest. So, just. Relax. Yeah. I want to. I don't. I don't want now that once you said, "Hey, I placed an order," people are gonna be like, "Wait, I thought you didn't. You couldn't purchase internationally." No, I'm. I'm hand delivering his personally when he comes for Joe Fest. So, don't worry. Well, we have a super I, chat. If, for, go ahead. I was just gonna. If, if, if I don't want to want to wait, I can get you to post it to Ryan, and then get Ryan to post it to me, and I'll <laughs> cover all of that issue myself. Yeah, la- laserpants.com is is my international shipping source. <laughs> Oh, we were attacked by bots. Sorry, we're down. We're shut down for business. <laughs> but uh, we got a super chat from M Vargo ninety seven. Thank you very much. He says, "Happy New Year's, gang! Here's to more great content all around in twenty twenty two." Thank you very much. Content, probably just good. Yeah, thank you, M Vargo. <laughs> um, I wanted to I wanted to pull up Retro Lasting's comment as well. So Tony bragging about being a time traveler again. I roll. <laughs> Love you, Michael. <laughs> So, Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Star Wars is back after a long hiatus, about a year off since um, season two of Mando, which ended on a really high note for me. I know that Luke Skywalker scene wasn't for everyone. And I was expecting... Mannequin Skywalker. Yeah. (laughs) PS4 Luke. That's what I call him. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But Book of Boba Fett came back and... It was like vanilla ice cream. I liked it, right? It wasn't like a chocolate sundae or a banana split, but it was okay. Um, but it picked up kind of a, right where we left off in Return of the Jedi, that flashback scene. Actually, no, mm-hmm. it, it picked up. That was the flashback. It picked up with him in the palace. Yeah. 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 Jabba's and palace on the throne. Yeah. And he was taking tributes from his... Uh, his underlings, I guess, or people paying their respects to the new crime crime lord. I loved that Trandoshan that brought the Wookiee pelt. That's yeah. a huge callback yeah. to the EU because yeah. the Trandoshans, the Bosque aliens, were um, kind of rivals with the Wookiees. And so to see that, that little callback to the EU, that was really cool. Oh, and by the way, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> I forgot to say that at the beginning. We are yeah. going to... Spoil the hell out of Book of Boba Fett tonight. Um, that boss was played by Robert Rodriguez, the director of that episode. Oh, no kidding. Really? Yeah. yeah. So his, that that Trandoshan face, I couldn't tell if it was puppetry or CGI. They've been using a lot of puppetry, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was a traditional costume. Yeah. yeah. They had very, very, very rarely do they, do they use... Uh, CGI for something that a human can't fit inside of. Yeah. I think that was kind of like the mandate when Disney took over. They wanted to go back to practical effects. Yeah. Too bad they didn't go back to good storytelling, but... (laughs) (laughs) We got... um, We're getting there. We're getting there. I also got, like, a lot of Egyptian vibes. I feel like they were heavily inspired by ancient Egyptian themes in this. I don't know if you guys caught that. I could, I could see that. Yeah, it, I can see it, that it, now you say it, but it didn't. 
occur to me at the time. I've watched it twice. Um, I wouldn't have done that if we weren't doing this podcast. I would have just watched it the once. But um, look, I, I, I think the show does have potential to go somewhere. The first episode was very problematic for me. Mm -hmm. Very problematic. Um, one of the things that made the original Star Wars so good to me when I was a kid, the very the first film, is Obi-Wan talking about um, the Clone Wars and the Knights, and there was all this mysterious backstory. Those little anecdotes that he shared were way better than the three films we ended up getting. And the weird thing is, on Disney+, Plus, when they launched this first episode, they also launched a um, kind of like a mini documentary about Boba Fett, mm -hmm. going all the way back to his original white prototype armor. They were supposed to be like super stormtroopers. And, um, and they're talking in there, and all the different people they're interviewing, they're like, you know, the great thing about Boba Fett is he's mysterious and you don't know a lot about him. And then they come out with this and it's like, you gave us way, way too much. I, I knew they were going to tell us how we got out of the Sarlacc pit. I thought that was going to come in a later episode, not in the very first one. But then that story just dragged on. Um, and I don't think it was a great story. I preferred the scenes um, you know, where, where Tia Moore Morrison is with Fennec Shan. I much preferred those parts of the episode than all of the flashback stuff. I actually really lean towards the flashback stuff. The whole, um, he's stripped of his armor. He's taken prisoner by the Tuscan Raiders. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. He's being dragged behind. Now, what were they enslaving him for? To to dig up those little seeds for water? I was wondering was that, that too. They were just like keeping him prisoner for what? You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, they did the same thing with Anakin's mother. And yeah. I always wondered, why did they take her prisoner? What What's going on? Yeah. But, I mean, it's not that hard to dig up some water pods, whatever those things were. Uh, maybe they were uh, crate dragon droppings. <laughs> something i don't know <laughs> but i i did like um seeing more of the uh tuscan raider like culture mm -hmm. them in their in their tents they're almost like no nomadic in this series and in the prequels they had like structured huts right in this one they just had tents that looked like pyramids by the way more callback they, to they, they look like arabic bedouin which you know come across loads of them in the in the when Desert Rat was in the deserts of Iraq, mm -hmm. oh, you see how that rhymed? Desert Rat <laughs> in the deserts of Iraq. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, yeah, they're very much like the the, the Bedouin culture. You know, these people who live out in the deserts in tents. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get to a few super chats, and then we're going to get into our uh, our top five. To we're we're going to kind of sprinkle in our top five pickups of twenty twenty one throughout discussing yeah. the book of Boba Fett. So uh, James Salzberg, thank you very much. He says, hand delivery at Joe Fest is an employee perk. <laughs> hand delivery. I wish I was an employee. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, James. Uh, Wesley Hendricks, thank you very much. He says, Bobby, any chance of fitting an SPAS 12 shotgun with folding stock and a Marlin model 1895 SBL in the next weapons pack? I'd like to fit my Jurassic Park Amber figures with guns. So... I've had a lot of people ask me for that shotgun, which is such an iconic shotgun, you know, and I love Robert Muldoon from the original. The thing is, that's a very dated shotgun. Um, it's not really a common shotgun nowadays. Like you go into a, you know, a, a gun store nowadays, they have, uh, you know, much better automatic shotguns these days. Um, I think it's either called a it's either called a typhoon or a hurricane. It's very much like an AR style uh, semi auto shotgun, which is is on my list to get. But you know, it it is it is a bit dated, but it is iconic, and I do want to make sure that that this line has guns that people want. But I also I'd like to keep it on the modern side. Although I do have a Thompson that we just tooled up, uh, just because you know it's my my one of my favorite rifles. Um, 
you know, it's a very period piece. Uh, there is an AA-12 shotgun coming, as ugly as that shotgun is, but that's coming. Uh, there's a Marlin Dark coming. Um, you see, the but, thing with the Thompson, though, Bobby, like, I could, I, I want to put that with Kerak, because even though it's all modern, yeah, yeah. that would totally be, it would yeah, fit. I could see know? that. I could see that. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, there, there's there's not going to be any shortage of, of guns coming. Uh, I got, you know, Mark from Mark 2 Designs uh, working on a ton of new guns right now. So guns are something people can never have enough of. And, you know, I've got an idea for um, a big end of the year uh, arsenal tin uh, that's mm. coming. That, that will have a bunch of new guns and things like that. So 3 POA well, exclusive right there. Three POA nah. exclusive. <laughs> um, I'll put them on the list. It's kind of one of those things that the timing is right. If I'm like, okay, well, I, I need a gun. Um, there's a lot on my list personally that I want to get in the line, but you know, it's again, it's, it's an iconic shotgun. Cool. Clever. Uh, thank you, Wesley. We got one from toy connections. Thank you very much. He says transit fee for when Ryan visits me in Vancouver. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, he says, though, this will only get you as far as the border. You'll need to hitchhike the rest of the way. Uh, that might get me uh, to the end of my block nowadays, but thank you very much. And I hope I am <laughs> yeah. able to make it up there for the Vancouver comic and toy show in February. Awesome toy show, man. Yeah. Um, it's great up there. Uh, Timothy Hans, Thank you very much. He says, congratulations, Bobby on the rollout of the figures. Everyone overall is happy. I can't wait to get mine, but I love all the pictures people are posting. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's, it's been super exciting and you know, I try to take moments to stop and, and enjoy it as busy as I am. And, you know, I was cleaning up the kind of the warehouse the other day and, you know, inventorying product. And I stopped to think like how cool it is that, you know, for so long I was the only one playing with these samples and figures. And now it's cool that you guys actually have them and, and are loving them. Like that's really, really exciting for me. It's kind of hard to see it on camera, but I got my display right up there on top of the details. With my Love old it. school uh, action force posters from the first Kickstarter era, I think. That's right. Yeah. Um, thank you, Timothy. And then, wow, Sal, you shouldn't have. Jeez. Thank you very much. My man. Very, very generous, as always. Thank you, Sal. He says, I really needed this show. Thank you, gentlemen. Bobby, I'll see you Monday morning. Love you all. <laughs> Love you, <laughs> Sal. Bud. Is that when the shipping begins for uh, the rest of series one? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna come in Monday and start processing orders. I got to print out. Uh, I don't think orders are gonna go out on Monday, probably Tuesday. But we're gonna start. I got to print out, you know, thousands of pick lists and you know start start getting stuff pulled. But we, we should probably box up some stuff. We'll see. Um, but definitely Tuesday and then through the rest of the week. Cool. Right on. Thank you, Sal. Very generous. And I think, uh, oh, we got Matt Crop Cropsey. Thank you very much. He says, Happy New Year's, Ryan, Tony, and Bobby. Hope they bring back Hammerhead in the Book of Boba Fett. I totally agree. I, I want more original trilogy era aliens. And yeah. we, we actually got a lot of that. We got yeah. we got 8D8, which yeah. I would have rather EV99, but yeah. it is it is still cool that they brought in 8D8. But 8D8 was the one torturing the yeah. gong droid. But like so he, he, yeah, go ahead. He was all about the torture. He was like, "No, we got to torture him, boss. Like we have to rule by torture." I was like, "That's awesome." See, like EV ninety nine was a much cooler one. He had a cooler voice, and he was snarky. Um, you know, he. I feel like he would have been the one uh, still there. But at the same time, I think the confusing part is who died on the sail barge and who did it. Who didn't? Yeah. Like Droopy McCool was. On the sail barge in Return of the Jedi, how did that chubby bastard get off the sail barge before it blew up? Because he oh, was no, in... no, that that was Max Rebo, the blue or Max elephant. Rebo. That's that's what yeah. I mean. Max Rebo, but Max Rebo was in uh, Mos Espa. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, where'd you come from? And I know people said that they did a backstory on how Bib Fortuna got there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of that. Like, didn't you die? Didn't you get blown up? So yeah, it was him and. I'd like to think that was Figger and Dan that he was jamming with from mm. the cantina. You know, it's like the Tatooine super group. Yeah. 
Because I was like, where's like, Sice Noodles? And where's Droopy McCool? Where are the other two? Maybe, maybe they didn't get off the sail barge. Maybe they, they didn't get off. off. Maybe, maybe he's like, maybe Max Rebo's like fire retardant. So like, <laughs> he just blew up and like landed in the sand. And he's like, guess I'm walking. Yeah. And then fire one, retard- what's he, is, is he like Condor with a spare head? <laughs> <laughs> His fire retardant hood. Uh, Timothy Hans, thank you very much. Uh, he says Tony says Action Force makes the rest of your Action Force uh, your action figures look like pussy cats. <laughs> Come on, Timothy, you know that's not what I said. I said Action Force makes your other figures look like pussies. For the biggest balls he... in the business, collect your Action Force today. <laughs> I don't think YouTube would have let him just put that in the in the in the maybe super chat. maybe. Yeah. Thank you for the super chat, Timothy. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. I, seriously, I was at work watching that video when it first dropped, and I was like almost in tears. And my, my coworkers are looking at me like, what is this guy? What's going on? Uh, that was great. And Brian Dillingham, thank you very much. He says, Jennifer Beals as a Twilight is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she is. How old did you say she was, Tony? She's like in She's her like late 50s? 50, 55. I, I don't know how old she is, but she was in, uh, what was it again? Flashdance? Flashdance. Like that's an early '80s film, man. Yeah. Um, yeah that that woman has aged well. Beautiful yeah, she was, woman. She was born in 1963, so she's almost 60, and she looks like she's in her 30s. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So wow. I was uh, born in 1999, and look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we are all caught up on Super Chats. So uh, let's take a little uh, pause from Book of Boba Fett. And uh, let's get into our uh, number five favorite pickup of 2021. Now, we're not doing favorite figures or favorite toys released in 2021. We're just doing our favorite additions to our collection in the past year, 2021. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be some vintage you know, stuff from years ago. Um, but uh, Tony, let's start with you, man. What's your, uh, what's your number five? Well, mine is almost all vintage, my, my top five. So <laughs> my number five is my carded desert rat action figure from the original vintage Palatoy line. This is what other collectors tell. I didn't know this. Other collectors are telling me that they only believe there's about six carded examples left in existence. Wow. So this was a very expensive purchase, which is why it's not higher on the list, because this cost me a crap ton of money. Like, why Bobby couldn't have just made me into one of those Space Force troopers that you can get for $20? Um, yeah. But uh, when, 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 when I kind of first learned that I was going to become Desert Rat, I immediately went out wanting to get a carded one. And I start hearing from people that, Oh, they, they don't show up, man. There's like only six of them in the world and they're all squirreled away in collections. You know, you've you got to have a lot of luck to find this. And then within two months, someone posted it on a Facebook group. And I was like, I don't I don't care how much it costs. Um, it's so pretty. So pretty. Yeah, well, and, and see, the thing is, the guy was asking <clears throat> £620 sterling and I ended up paying $53,000 because Grace caught me at work. She came into my office because we work at the same place, right? She came into my office, popped in the office to see me, and I had Facebook up, and I'm chatting to this guy trying to do the deal, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm on Facebook buying an action figure, and she's like, and it's how much? And you're doing this at work? And I was like, I can't miss out on this. It's how much? And I was like, I just happened to have another tab open on my computer where I was looking at a new car. So I quickly opened up that tab and I went, oh, yeah, but honey, I'm going to buy you a new car. Oh. <laughs> that was distraction method. And I ended up following through and buying both. No. So there's my $53,000 action figure. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Okay. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that's kind of like the Vinyl Cape Jawa of uh, Action Force, huh? Uh, the Australian Jungle Fighter is the other one. So if Bobby wants to be really mean, he can do Desert Rat version <laughs> two and and 
take it from when I was in the Australian Army and make him a jungle fighter with the slouch hat. And then, yeah, um, yeah, that, 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 yeah they're even rarer, carded jungle fighters. What's uh, What did you say it was, six 600 pounds sterling? What is that to U.S. dollars? Eight, nine hundred? Um, yeah. Got it. Something like that. Uh, Bobby, how about you, man? Um, let's see. What do I want my number five to be? Uh, I'm going to pick this guy because I'm going to surprise everyone with one later. So this is the Diamond uh, Diamond Select Sauron from the Lord of the Rings line, uh, which just came out this, this past year, end of the year before. Now, the line – listen, you guys all know I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Huge. And I was so excited for a new Lord of the Rings line because the old Toy Biz line was amazing at, at the time. They – did really, really great stuff with that line. They went so deep with it, and I got all of them at the time. And But, you know, they're dated. And, it, it, you know, I, I wanted to see a new update to the Lord of the Rings figure at this scale. So, you know, when I saw they were coming out, I'm like, all right, Diamond Select. All right, well, they, they do pretty good stuff. And, you know, some of the... the, the uh, the prototype shots looked all right, and then I got I ordered all the figures. They came, and they're absolute dog shit, man. Um, <laughs> I couldn't be more disappointed with the line. Uh, you know, like Legolas has knife sheaths on his quiver, and he doesn't have his elven knives. Um, Aragorn's face looks terrible. They didn't do the digital printing, so it was like they they missed uh, an opportunity, and I don't think we're ever going to see. Lord of the Rings, you know, the, the Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings at, in an action force, you know, or in an action figure scale, um, you know, after this, like this was kind of the last chance, which really sucks. However, the figures, Unless you pick up the license. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That, it's an expensive, <laughs> it's expensive. All the, all the figures are new tooling. It, it's, it's really expensive. Uh, Toy Biz did it right. It's just, you got to appreciate the Toy Biz stuff, even though they're dated. Um, but the the whole first series came with build a figure parts to make a Sauron. Now the Toy Biz Sauron was really really great. However, he was a little small, and this is the build a figure Sauron from the Diamond Select series, and he is amazing. Like seeing the rest of the line, you're like, uh. But then seeing him and seeing him together, he looks so good. Um, so I'm really really happy. Uh, with this figure uh, he was he was one of the highlights for me this year and he's he's on on you know he's next to me at, at my desk uh, you know just because he's such a cool figure and so well done um, that he has to be there so that's my number five that thing looks awesome he's really it's great awesome. you're making his articulation's wanna... great his paint's great his soft goods cape is great uh, they nailed the detail on him um, you know, like I said, the Toy Biz one's good, but he falls short just a little bit, uh, whereas this one is perfect. All right, well, let's get to my number five. But first, I have a runner-up, and I had to mention this because it's been so useful. I love having this in my collection. It wasn't an expensive piece. It was like $9 on Amazon, prime shipping. But um, my runner-up for favorite addition to my collection is my heat gun. It's been, so, <laughs> it's been so useful lately. I picked this up early in the year. I love this thing. Um, it's an invaluable tool in my collection. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobby. I had to, man. <laughs> you can call him a bitch, Bobby. He's going to punch you, me you in know, the face I, and show us now. Listen, listen, I'm going to make a quick confession here. It's not just my figures, right? No, I, I, dude, I've used this on probably every line I collect outside of like Moffex and and SH figures. I wouldn't wave that around too much, Ryan, because it actually doesn't look like a heat gun from here. It is, I, I promise. <laughs> That's where the heat comes out. <laughs> oh, I've got to make a real quick confession. That just reminded me of my. Um, you remember that first time I was on Infinity Equation and I tried to sum up Action Force in one word. Yes. You know. Delayed. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say it. I I still have nightmares that Bobby actually never speak to me again oh. since I did that. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you it, can't bust... It tears me up balls. inside. I feel terrible about it. 
if you can't it was bust all in the purposes of entertainment. Yeah. If look, <laughs> if you can't bust your friend's balls, are you really friends? Exactly. Are we, are we, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I've made, I've made my fair share of jokes about oh, it. Oh yeah. Being delayed, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. So my number five, it's actually the only vintage toy on my list. Um. Why is <laughs> I'm a big Jack Murphy fan. Um, <laughs> it's the only vintage toy on my list and one of the only vintage toys in my collection. Uh, it was sent to me by a very good friend from Down Under. Did that sound right? Yep. It is my Coleco Rambo Forces of Freedom Defender vehicle. Freaking love this thing. And it scales perfectly. With Action Force. Nice. Loads so, of people have been asking me in the YouTube comments on my Action Force video about where did the watchtower and the ammo crates and all that come from? I was like, it all comes from the playset from the Coleco Rambo line, the Savage Strike headquarters. Scales perfectly, man. And for a line from 1986, that shit was well made. Yep. It looks so good. Yeah, no, this thing this thing is rock solid. It's, at, it, it's awesome. It has... Look at that. It's got suspension, man. I freaking love this thing. Um, if you want action figures with the biggest balls in the business, collect Coleco's Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a super chat uh, from Raiden. Thank you very much. He says, I slept during Kickstarter like a moron. Bellaverse.com wave one in stock sale saved my behind. I haven't been this excited over a line in years. Great podcast, guys. P.S. I absolutely pre-ordered Tony. Oh, right on, man. Thanks, Did you man. pre-order me Appreciate for it. a birthday party or it's <laughs> Is that the Tony that pops out of a cake? <laughs> <laughs> um, Look, all, all I'm saying is, guys, if you walk into Joe Fest 2022 and you see Bobby wheeling in a massive cake, I would look away because you might not know what. If I come out of that, like, uh, what was that that girl's name from Baywatch? In Pamela, Anderson, Anderson. Pamela. Pamela. No, it wasn't Anderson. Pamela Anderson. It was um, er- Erica. You know, in, in Under Siege, where she jumps out of the cake and don't remember Under Siege, the Steven Seagal movie. It's not Pamela Anderson. Yeah, I've, I've seen that movie like once. Yeah, I saw it <laughs> once years ago and forgot about it. <laughs> I don't remember Erica Elmack. Not... Yeah, that's it. Oh no, I've say, watched yeah, that movie it. probably fifty times, but I only watched that scene. Okay. <laughs> she jumped out of a cake topless, bro. And I was like at the ripe I mean, age when that movie came out. I mean, the, the Pam Tommy video is way better. Like, why would you waste your time on the Under Siege? I, did, I didn't have access to the Pam Tommy video when I was 30. Oh. I could either watch that scene from Under Siege. That was, one could... of, that was one of my greatest purchases when I was a freshman in high school was the Pam and, and Tommy video. I think it was awesome. It was the best 10 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> the a only v- way I VHS can access that was recorded for the hundred millionth time. <laughs> Green. The only way I could access porn at that age, Bobby, was to steal that video cassette that my older brother had under his bed. <laughs> but it was it was called Teenage Confessions of a Peanut Butter Freak, and it was about oh a nephew God. and his aunt Opal. And it is the, not the pleasant. Show, the view. show just took a turn. It just took a turn. Oh, it's a story. (laughs) (laughs) Keith Knight saying he's talking about the Steven Seagal under siege. (laughs) Erica Elinak wasn't the biggest tit in that movie. (laughs) (laughs) Steven Seagal. Okay. Um, What were we? Uh, Ryan's all flustered now. (laughs) Book of Boba Fett. (laughs) <laughs> uh, oh, oh that was great okay um fyi that's why i don't like peanut butter <laughs> how dare you scarred for life bro scarred for life <laughs> oh my god <laughs> get yourself together ryan all right i'm sorry that's really funny um <laughs> book of Boba book Fett. Of Bo- <laughs> huh yeah, the book of Boba Fett. Right. Okay, yeah. I, I, I want to bring something up. 
he when he goes in and sees that hot 60 year old woman um he walks in there helmet comes off and i'm like oh they're doing this the helmet off thing i, I hope they don't do too much of that she but then they come the out peanut butter and then it just goes to <laughs> yeah yeah but then then they 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 come outside you know and his helmet's full of i don't know what they are Republic credits, Imperial credits, whatever the hell, coins, right? Yeah, they had the Republic logo on it. Yeah, and then they get jumped by the Foot Clan who have stolen all of the, <laughs> the Action Force Swarm Figure shields, right? <laughs> and they're surrounded by the Foot Clan and this really, really slow fight style. Like I was watching oh. that going, this yeah. is slow, poorly edited, and it's Robert yes. Rodriguez who made one of the best episodes of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. You know, the scene where Grogu's up on the hill and the Stormtroopers got mortars and mm -hmm. Fennec Shan's doing all the sniper stuff and everything. But they're having this fight. And, and you know, Boba's getting his ass kicked. Am I the only person who sat there the entire time going, dude, you've got a fucking jetpack. Yes. Just fly out of the middle. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That, that fight scene was incredibly lame it was it was so slow and and like you said the edit the way it was cut together it was like why would the foot clan as you call them <laughs> take turns taking swings at him and they would wait for him to look at them like one guy would stab at him with their electric staff and he'd block it and then he'd look at another guy and he'd take a stab at him and then he'd block it i'm like this is it was very amateur yeah. And when I watched it a second time, because I, I was looking for this, so like you know, he, he the two Gamorian guards that he um you know gives them a reprieve, they obviously come in to help him out, right? When you watch it the second time, you see the four of them walk out of that bar or pleasure palace or you know, pants palace, whatever it is, laser dungeon. <laughs> You see the four of them walk out, right? The Gamorrean guards walk out with them. And then there's a, I think they, they cut to a close up and then cut back to them walking down the street, you know, talking about, you know, I intend to rule with respect and all of that. Mm -hmm. I watch it the second time and I'm like, where the fuck have those Gamorrean guards gone? They went to the pub. Yeah. They just walked out of the pub. <laughs> or they were they were getting sprayed down. She's like, Do you want us to wash your Gamorrean yeah. guards? No, no, no. But when they first walk out, the first shot you see, they walk out with them. Mm. Right? They kind of walk out either side of the door, cuts to a close up, and then cuts back and they're gone. Mm -hmm. Like that that it doesn't hmm. go very well on repeat viewing. I'm gonna have to yeah. watch it again and, and see that. Um and, he didn't use his jetpack in what five minutes before that scene. We saw him use his flamethrower to bust out of the sarlacc, right? I'm like, flamethrower, use it. That too. You know? I mean, uh, we know everything works because in Mandalorian, everything worked. Yeah. And he, he, he uses his, his, you know, his Crayola paint job in Mandalorian. Right. And then, so it's like you start this episode and you're like, wait, don't you remember you ever stuff? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give my two cents on it. For a minute. And I don't want it to sound like I'm just ripping on it. I very much enjoyed the episode. I love that that we have Boba Fett back again. Um, but I think they are... Now, granted, you're going to say, dude, it was a character that had six lines and like three minutes of screen time in the whole trilogy. But I think they're getting away from what we love about Boba Fett. It's like, this is the guy that Vader said no disintegrations to. The guy you know had a reputation and he was a badass dude. And I just feel like, granted, his time with the Tuscans probably changed him. I just feel like we don't need another Mandalorian hero. We got that with the Mandalorian. I would almost rather see him still be kind of like a ruthless bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, the whole rule with, with respect, it's like, Okay, but again, if we have you as a hero, we it's it's just another Mandalorian. Like I would rather seen seen it from a different point of view. And it's like, you know, he's just not the same character that I think we 
we loved, you know, the mysteriousness of Boba Fett. And to Tony's point, it's like, it's going to be like Iron Man. We're going to see him with the mask off all the time. Yeah. And I would very much rather see him with the mask on. And I also was one of those people that didn't like that they, they put Tamar Morrison's voice in Empire Strikes Back. I didn't like that at all. I don't like you messing with the original stuff. Um, I know it's they're all clones and they're all clones of him, but I just didn't like that. Like, you totally changed them up. And I don't know. It's just it, – it's also like – you know, I made the joke about, you know, Fat Boba Fett and Mandalorian. Like, yeah, he like he wasn't like Boba Fett was always kind of this slim, lean kind of ninja. And now it's like he's kind of this, like seeing the flashback scenes of him with the Tuscans and he's only in the jumpsuit. He almost has like that dad bod where his legs are really skinny and his and his upper half is kind of thick. So he just looks weird. You know, and it's like, I, there's just something about it that's not Boba Fett for me. I'm still enjoying it. It's still Star Wars. It still has the Star Wars feel. But it's it's not 100% Boba Fett. To me, it's like, there's Boba Fett, and then there's this. And I'm I'm treating them kind of differently. Um, yeah, I, I would have almost, pref- yeah, I, I absolutely would prefer, you know, the, the ruthless bounty hunter. He's a criminal. He's a crime lord. <clears throat> but with with a sense of honor, not necessarily heroic. Yeah, mm. and they yeah. really went out of their way to show that he's like a good guy. Remember with the the Tuscans lizard dog, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. he hurts it, and then he he's trying to help it. And, yeah, whereas and I, like old Boba Fett, like the Boba Fett we kind of thought he was, would have just taken that thing and snapped its neck, right? right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Um, just just to your comments, Bobby, about you know the skinny legs and the dad bod. That's where Gracie says you went wrong with the desert rat figure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to, to Murray Morrison, he's a thick dude, but he's built. You know, he, he's not just like an overweight pudgy he's, guy. He's built, no, but he, Jeremy he's a, Bullock, he's a Maori. Yes, he's, he's a New Zealand Maori. Those dudes are big guys. They're like Samoans. Yeah. Yeah, and Tongans and Fiji, and they are big dudes. And Jeremy Bullock was a very slender dude. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, he, he was almost like Anthony Daniels in that way. Like Anthony Daniels can still fit in that metal suit to this day. You know, very slender guy. So it, he should stay it is in that a little, suit. huh? He should stay in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, that's another thing. He kept taking his helmet off and. Yeah. That, that that's fine. Yeah, Boba Fett's going to look just like Django and the clones. Cool. Um, but like you said, part of the you know one of the coolest things about Boba was that mystery. I I want him yeah. to keep the helmet on. And that, to, yeah, you know, that's a good, that's a good part about the Mandalorian. It's like they have that lore about you know not taking off your helmet. So it's great that they hire Pedro Pascal, who's this great actor and who's a very popular actor. But ninety percent of the time, it's not him in the costume, which is. I, I like that. I like that they keep his helmet on. He takes mm-hmm. it off once, twice a season. Whereas Boba Fett, it's like we've seen him more with the helmet off than we have with it on. Yeah, yeah so. it it's really off putting. And, and they could have done it like the Mandalorian. They yeah. they could have had him in the helmet the whole time, and then yeah. for close ups once in a while, twice a season, taking the helmet off, and there's Tamara Morrison's face. Yeah. Um. But. Uh, <clears throat> How about the uh, rooftop parkour in in Mos Espa? That took me out of it. Like that to me, that was like more off putting than the janky fight scene. Like the, there's something about stuff being too real world, like Earth, that will take me out of Star Wars. You know what I mean? Mm. And like that parkour, I just I just envisioned guys, you know, doing parkour on in rooftops in New York or whatever. Yeah. It just didn't. It yeah, just that's didn't why feel I called like them the foot plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it just didn't feel really Star Wars. Um, and I know I I sound like I'm crapping all over this episode. I for for the most part I enjoyed it. Like I said, vanilla ice cream. I I, f- I felt I also felt like the the guy that played the the mayor's uh, domo. I felt the like major domo? Was, the major domo. I felt like yeah. he was really removed from feeling star wars like everything feels very star wars just e- even like the costumes and you know the the traditional uh you know costumes like like the 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 um the bosque uh race creature 
But like he showed up and he looked, he seemed very out of place. I think his, Mm -hmm. his acting and it's like, you gave him like the, the tendrils off, but he had just a very human face, which I get, but it's like, at least like give him like a, like a bigger brow, like do something. He just, I don't know. His character took me out of it a little bit. Like that whole scene. I was like, Ooh. Okay. Well, you remember Bib Bib Fortuna? His face it was like monstrous, you know. Yeah. It was like gross, and yeah. grotesque, and he, he had fangs, and he had a drooping jowls, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, the the Twi'lek that you're talking about looked like a dude in a Twi'lek hat. Yeah, basically, it it, it just wasn't very believable. Um, really quick, super chat. Thank you very much, John Papa Sergio. He says, what the hell was up with the Boston Dynamic Dog Robots? <laughs> so I didn't know about those Boston Dynamic Dog Robots until I saw uh, something on YouTube. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've seen those before. They put those directly in Star Wars. That was a little... What are they? So do you remember the scene in Mos Espo when they had the four-legged droids kind of walking through? Oh, yeah, yep. Those are actual real-world robots made by uh, Boston Dynamics. Oh, okay. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, yeah there's should, something new today. Yeah, they shouldn't do stuff like that. I don't. Yeah, I didn't care for. I mean, obviously, the first time I watched it, I didn't. I didn't really realize, and then I saw something on YouTube, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's an actual robot." Are they going to put Asimo in there next? Uh, <laughs> Asimo, you know that 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 droid thing that they built twenty years ago. Um. But let's get into our number four picks. How about that? Yeah. Tony, what's your number four favorite addition to your collection? You've got to let me have two entries here because I couldn't decide, and these are donations to the channel. So the first of which... You're such a picky bastard. (laughs) You can't follow the rules. We said five. Oh, I know, of, I know, I know, but let me have hold, six. R- before you show the tank, speaking of rules, we've limited ourselves to one Action Force figure each. I could put Action Force figures on this list? Shit. I mean, you can, if they're in your top five. It's too late now. You gotta read the group text, man. <laughs> How fucking busy am I, man? I don't know. Yeah, You're Doing something like, over there. No, no, <laughs> one wanted to see, no one wanted to see us do a countdown of... Yeah. Condor, Sergeant Slaughter, Kerak, Bone Collector, and Swarm, and leave Steel Brigade off because we don't like it. So, <laughs> no, so this was donated to the channel um, from a number of people got together. Um, apologies if I forget anyone, but you know, Keith Knight, Jody, Michael Schaefer, Scuba Pete, all these guys, kind of George Aitken all kind of banded together and got me uh, an actual Action Force International Heroes version of the Mauler. Um, the figure was in fairly poor condition, broken thumb. So this really minty figure actually came from Michael French at Retro Blasting. Um, I do need a mic, which I'll probably never get beyond a repro one, and a weapon. Um, but the actual vehicle is complete. So I love this, but I also love this that I got from Keith Knight. And it is my boxed Corgi gold Mazda pickup truck with the Incredible Hulk. I absolutely adore this. I had this when I was a kid. And what Keith actually did, I had the one with the with the red cage. There was also a rarer version with a grey cage on the back. And he sent me that in loose mint condition. Um, awesome. So thank I, you uh, very much, Keith. I, I, I'm pretty sure I have an extra... Uh, heavy metal rifle for you. You do? I do, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty, awesome. I'm pretty sure I have one. I'll give you a reach around at Joe Fest. Well, I was I was expecting that anyway, so you better bump that shit up, buddy. We are, we are gonna get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to ask Grace what she thinks about us getting uh, rooms, you know, with the adjoining oh. door. That's a terrible idea. You know, Tony, I <laughs> I had that Hulk car there, the the uh, the one with the red cage. Until I saw, I, I thought this was n- not sold in the, in the states. This is I, corgi it, toy. I had something just like it then, but 
the cage was all ripped up and there was no Hulk in it. Yeah, well, yeah. So the cage comes ripped up, so you can get the Hulk figure out of it. Um, but yeah, I, I had this as a kid, man, and I and I loved this. And I've I've mentioned it in several videos. And then Keith Knight turns around, he sends me the rare version and a mint box version. It's just a stunning piece. I love the art, like look at that classic art on the back. Yeah, they, uh, they sold Corgi in the states, though. Like I have yeah, a Corgi, I, I have a Corgi Batmobile. So oh okay cool yeah they, they had it here. yeah yeah I've got to go to my mom's house because I know she's probably got that in a box in her attic somewhere yep um uh Bobby what's your number four what is my number four you were supposed to decide I was um, <laughs> okay I'm gonna shock everyone with my number four oh. wow classified. Zartan. Um, this, listen, I've said it that Zartan is the best figure that that they've done. Besides Major Blood, they the best classified figure they they've done, and the single release version is really really good. And then when they did this, I'm like, awesome. Like, I I wasn't sure if they were gonna do color change because I know like when I was at Hasbro, like to do color change was really expensive. So I would always like when I was on Hero Mashers, I tried to do really like fun kid stuff because I was a kid line. So like I did a vac metalized arm on um, uh, Winter Soldier, which was probably one of the last vac metalized things they ever did there. Um, and then it's like I wanted to do color change and glow in the dark, and they were like, "It's too expensive." So you know when they released Zartan, he didn't have color change. I was like, "Well, I under I understand that," and I saw like people being upset about it, but it was like to me. I understood it, but then to surprise us, they like did it. And I was like, Whoa. And then they came out to set with all the heads and um, it's just a cool set, man. They, they nailed it with this one. So I love this figure. Yeah. I didn't pick that one up. Stand? It does not come with a figure stand. However, he fits on an action force stand. Hey, yeah. <laughs> that might've been the only 2021 GI Joe release. I didn't get. I mean, I, I actually got one, but I traded it to White Mike for uh, for the cartoon Venom. Um, I was good with the original release, but it, it's a it's a great figure. Yeah, it's good, man. It's really good. All right. So my number four is from one of my favorite toy lines to collect. It's from Mezco, and it is from their uh, Rumble Society, their Hoods collection. And that is the Mezco Vapor. Um, this is like a throwback to their old hoods line from the early 2000s. He's like a New York style graffiti, graffiti artist. He comes with a, tons of accessories, spray paint cans. He has a backpack with a working zipper. You can see the paint pens there in his backpack. Tons of storage. Um, it's just really cool. I've, I've always been into that uh, whole old school New York hip hop culture. Um, and so when I saw they were doing this figure, I was on it immediately. Um, the soft goods are great. The tailoring on these soft goods are second to none. Um, it's a great figure. That's the uh, the Hoods Mezco Vapor or Mezco Hoods Vapor uh, graffiti artist. So that's my number four. <clears throat> One of my favorite I'm, I'm not, I'm not, of all time. I'm not poking fun here, but... That's okay. Well, that that looks like a terrific figure, but I'm trying to get my head around where does that fit in your collection? Uh, with all my other Mezco Rumble Society stuff behind me here. <laughs> well, so a whole heap of them. Yeah, like so, like they, they have all they have all their own um, IPs that they that they do. In fact, they yeah. that's mostly what they do. They have their their Gomez stuff, their roaches. Um, I took their newest uh, Gomez body. And I made a three POA T-shirt to put on him, and then I put a skull head on him. I thought that looked kind of cool. Um, how how but, do you make those T-shirts? I got uh, heat transfer paper. They sell it at the office supply store, and yeah. then I just shrunk the logo, printed it out, ironed it on. Can you make me a analog toys T-shirt for Desert Rat? Maybe I already have. 
Oh. Yeah, I'm a bunch of action, action Force shirts for these, for my figures. <laughs> okay. Are you, are, you, are you saying I can't have one figure with an analog toy shirt on it? <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, that's Desert Rat in his off time, you know, on sabbatical, on yeah. holiday. Is that like breaking the – that's like breaking the fourth wall, though. Desert Rat with an analog toy shirt. So it's like Desert Rat is acknowledging the existence of analog toys, which is also acknowledging the existence of Tony Roberts, who he actually is. Fourth wall breaking fourth wall. So w w without giving too much away – <laughs> Tony, you're going to get something in the box I'm sending you when the shipping lanes open back up. And you don't have to call him Desert Rat, but um, it this will all be solved. Aha. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Okay. Okay. <laughs> little spoiler alert there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, back to the book of Boba Fett. Um, I think everyone kind of knows how we feel about it. I just want to say that monster at the end, that was Goro. <laughs> it was Goro. <laughs> that it was Goro. Goro. It was Goro, Goro or, the, or the Kraken. It, it, it was or like the Kraken, a... yeah. Uh, the monster with four arms came out of the sand. Yeah. He choked it out. They cut its head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, what, what, that's his name or is that from another oh, no, name? They, they didn't say its name. Or at least I don't know. Goro, Goro is the four-armed Half human, half dragon from Mortal Kombat. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, no, that that was that was very um, Clash of the Titans. No, yeah, that's also the Kraken. Like that's <laughs> yeah, 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 and and not not the um, what's that Sam guys? Not the new Clash of the Titans. That was old Clash of the Titans. <laughs> Look at Brian Rowland's comment. Frank or Half two point <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> nicely, nicely done, Brian. Shout out to Brian. I, I was, was awesome. thinking at the time, I was like, it's not as big as a Rancor. They might do a just a deluxe Black Series version retail of, of, of that. Um, I'd, I'd buy it. <laughs> look, my, my problem is, okay, when he has the fight with the Foot Clan who've stolen the Swarm Riot Shields... <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets poked a couple of times with a vibro blade and then he's laying on the floor and they've like, get me back to the healing chamber. Uh, like he's in shit state. And then you have a flashback to where he's like a deep fried fucking prune on the surface of Tatooine. Yeah. Like he's, he's, he's malnourished. He's dehydrated. He's been chained to a wooden post next to an orange Rodian for days, and yet he can jump on the back of this thing for his hero shot and strangle it. I thought the it same doesn't, thing. I thought the same it thing. It doesn't marry up, and it's like yeah. these purple, nurple, mighty specters with their shields fucked you up, <laughs> and yet you can take down the Kraken. Well, I mean, the Kraken was in the... Yeah, you're right. That doesn't make sense. <clears throat> in the EU, if I remember right, Boba Fett had a lot of scarring in his lungs, so maybe he was just winded after that fight against the Foot Clan. He had a lot of scar because he inhaled. I, I, I think I'm re remembering right. I think he inhaled like the digestive juices of the Sarlacc. <coughs> also, the Sarlacc would communicate with him telepathically in that book. It's a weird book. Hmm. Uh, well, but but for that for those of us non nerds who don't read those books, <clears throat> how are we supposed to know that watching Disney Plus? Like, how's my no, son you, supposed you, to know you that? Aren't. Absolutely, yeah. you aren't. No, yeah, it's just kind of. Uh, I think it's a victim of storytelling by committee, probably. You know, um, which is the biggest problem, probably, with the prequels. I, I mean, the sequels, storytelling by committee. The prequels were all written by George Lucas. Um. But I, like I said, my overall thoughts of the episode, mm -hmm. it set up some cool stuff. I'm excited to see where it goes. I, I hope we see some of those bounty hunters from The Empire Strikes Back on the bridge of the Death Star. 
I hope we get, you know, I hope Boss shows up or at least Forlum and, and Zuckus. Yeah. Maybe IG88. I mean, they've already if, got the puppet and the voice, right? From IG11. Bosk, it, listen, if Bosk shows up, Sal will lose his shit. Yeah, he will. He loves Bosk. Yeah. We're going to have so to. So will Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> Although they haven't got Disney Plus, so. Um. Oh, super chat. We got a super chat here from Bjorn Jorgensen. Thank you very much. He says maybe Boba Fett had arthritis. <laughs> well, you know, look, Tamar Morrison is about sixty years old. Boba Fett in this show should be about forty. So that's a thing too. <laughs> I mean, he looks a little. And then, of course, Bo Katana Mandalorian. She's supposed to be pushing sixty, but she looks like she's about thirty-five because Katie Sackoff is. Not that old. Yeah, but it's you know, Star Wars, it's man. Yoda was what, 800? 900. 900. Buddy. 900, years, 900 old. years old. You reach look as good. You will not. <laughs> yeah. Chewbacca's 300. He hasn't even got gray hair. <laughs> yeah, but they're aliens. I'm, you know, I'm 44 I mean... and I haven't got hair. <laughs> <coughs> I'm, <coughs> well, I'm 40. I have hair. You have fabulous hair, Ryan. Moving on. Um, <laughs> you you but, should make your own hairspray commercials. <laughs> I have to get some hairspray. Um, so I don't know. Where do you guys want to see this go? Do you want to see him go through this Walter White journey? Just go be, become more evil? They're not going to do that, right? It's like Disney Plus. Um, yeah. Um, I I would like to see that just because, like I said, we we have the Mandalorian. Like he. He's a hero. I don't need another hero show. I would really like to see a bad Boba Fett. I'd like to see him kind of go dark. Um, you know, I mean, we'll see. I mean, the, the, the first episode was slow. You know, also it's like, you know, we're, as fans, we can kind of pick things apart forever. Like the first thing I noticed, like he's in the back of the tank in Jabba's palace and there's nobody around. So it's just what's her name. She's there, and I'm like, wait a second. If someone found out that Bib Fortuna got killed and Boba Fett was back, and he had no one protecting Jabba's palace, don't you think some other mob would be there trying to take it over? Like, if the Foot Clan had six or seven dudes, they could have taken that, that place over real quick. With him in the back yeah. to take, all he had to do was kill her. So that was like, the fact that he kind of just shows up and... He really doesn't have a big presence yet. All of a sudden, he wants to be this, this leader, like this, this you know, this ruler. It was kind of like, all right, well, well, like I'm open to seeing where it goes. I think it's going to be good. I'd like to see, yeah, some some uh, bounty hunters. You know, there's definitely going to be some fan servicing just because you know John Favreau and Dave Filoni are all about that. Um, I would just like to see a different vibe than. Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. A different vibe than, you know, good guy, hero Boba, Boba Fett. Yeah. I, I, I would like to see an honorable criminal. Mm. Um, I mean, for me, it's like as much as I like Terminator 2, I prefer the, the Terminator character in the first film. Yeah. When I they turned him that. into the good guy. Yeah. Yeah. It, like you know, it went from edgy sci-fi to a PG action film. If Boba Fett killed the major domo, it would have been a lot cooler. Like that was a mm. perfect, a perfect chance yes. for him to be like, wait, you didn't you wait, you want money from me? And if he just shot him, like it would have been awesome. That would have been I would have been like, now we're talking. Um or, or maybe, maybe he had some kind of character growth we haven't seen yet while living with the Tuscan Raiders. Maybe and that, was, that, in. that was the other thing I thought. I'm like, you know what? They're going to like, it's all going to make sense because of his redemption with, you know, the Tuscan Raiders. Cause look, when we saw him, he had a black cloak, he had a gaffy stick. So it's like, they're going to like, we're going to see a few episodes of them bringing him into their clan and sure. being a part of it. And that's where you're going to kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. well, it's Quick pee break, guys, for me. Okay. I, it's going to be uh, six episodes, I think. That's kind it. Of a short, oh. Yeah. Kind of a short season. Oh. Um, the first one was only 35. 
What's the next thing we get after Book of Boba Fett? I think Do it's Obi Wan. Is it Obi Wan? Which they haven't announced when that that's happening, right? I thought it was Obi Wan, and then <clears throat> the Rogue One guy, um, Cassian Andor. Cassian Andor. And then we're not Mando... gonna, we're not going to get Mandalorian for a while, right? Yeah, Mando season three is at the end of the, this year. Wow. So I think we got uh, we got Obi Wan, Cassian, Bad Batch season two, and then okay. and then Mando season three. And then when is when is Star Wars Celebration? I should know. I had tickets until I refunded them. Because um, it's not it's not May the fourth, right? Star Wars Celebration is is a different date than May the fourth, right? No, it coincides with another holiday. Because a lot of people were upset when they rescheduled it for some other. Maybe it was Memorial Day. Maybe someone in the uh, chat will tell us. Because I, I was watching one video about saying how they were saying that there's going to be a lot of, you know, probably going to see the first trailer for Obi Wan for Star Wars Celebration. I'm like, well, when is that? Is that the er, in the beginning of this year or is it in the spring? Is it summer? You know? Yeah. Because um, yeah, six episodes going to go real quick, and then what? We're not going to have anything. Like that's going to suck. Uh, well, yeah. they and might it, jump it point, back into a. I think I think at this point, Star Wars celebration is quite the oxymoron because there's not much to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I I'm holding out hope because I know that Favreau and Filoni are still yeah steering the yeah. ship for Book of Boba yeah. Fett. We'll see where it I goes just, after that. But I just heard um that they they fired Kathleen Kennedy from the uh, New Republic show. So they they kind of did what what they did with Mandalorian, where they took her off, and she has no creative ability. Which is interesting that they upped her contract, and now they're just taking projects away from her. I'm like, yo, just fire her, man. Pay her like twenty million dollars and just fire her. If you fired her, do you realize the the collective celebration that Star Wars fans would have? Yeah. It would be it, it would be like I know. Tony, you don't like the Snyder Cut. But it's like when the Snyder Cut got announced, it was like, yo, people were like, finally, you listened, and that was that. It's like, listen, if they did that with Kathleen Kennedy, man, Star Wars fans would be so happy. It would do so much for Disney and Lucasfilm if if they fired her, which, you know, they're um, probably not. But No, no. Uh, even yeah, even though I don't like the Snyder Cut, it is way better than Joss Whedon's version. You bet your I'll ass. I'll give you that. Ass. It's the, way better than that. They won't fire Kathleen Kennedy because of the optics. She'll eventually leave on her own when she's ready. Yeah. Um, well, would she hurry up and get ready then? I yeah. think she's got too much pride to leave. I think if she left, yeah. she would look at it as like a defeat. So she'll she'll ride it out no matter how much they take from her. Yeah. Um, she just seems like that much of an asshole to do that. <laughs> mm. I. I, I don't care if she's like the the CEO of Lucasfilm or whatever her position is. I just don't want her anywhere near anything creative. Yeah. You know, maybe she can Which just I make think they realize that. They're like, you know what, just be the puppet and let you know, let Favreau and Filoni handle this shit. Yeah. Before we get into <laughs> our top three of twenty twenty one, let's uh get some super chats in. John Papa Sergio, thank you, man, once again. Um he says, I'm betting a bounty is put on Boba and Mandalorian answers it, killing him and taking the Slave One since the <laughs> Razor Crest is gone. That's actually a pretty good theory. Interesting. Interesting. But no. I, I, I don't know if they'll kill off Boba Fett. That's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. They won't kill off Boba Fett, and Boba Fett started helping him in the Mandalorian season yeah. two. I because wouldn't be surprised. Honor. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jin Jadarin in in Boba Fett. At least oh, one yeah. one episode. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they'll cross paths at, at, at least once. Yeah. And, and it probably, like John says, it'll probably be he's, you know, he's hunting a bounty or something maybe. Um, but yeah, that, that's a that's a good theory. Um, I don't think they'll kill Boba Fett, though. Yeah. Uh, Scott Hughes. Hey, man. Uh, thank you very much. He says, we need Godfather Part 2 in the Star Wars universe. That's a good point. This felt a little Godfather-y almost. Um, also, why was there a stormtrooper in the Sarlacc? The Empire wasn't on Tatooine. They um, were. Um, they that were. could have been like a sand trooper. He, yeah, he was so in they, there for they, a while. One of the videos I watched said because he he was corroding, which means he had been in there for a while, that he might have been one of the 
the sand troopers that was there looking for R2 and 3PO when when they crashed down on Tatooine. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah. he he was in there for a long time because his armor was already melting. And what yeah. 3PO said you digest for a thousand years in there. So Yeah. Uh thank you Scott. Uh, I'm still using that knife. Uh, Master Sun 42, thank you very much. He says, if Boba travels to Mandalore for any reason and we discover how we got his armor, I will lose it. Hey, guys, glad to see you all. Tony, wash your hands. That was a quick <laughs> break. It's his dad's armor. That's that's Jango Fett's armor. He even says that. He said right, that yeah. in, in he, the Mandalorian. He said that in Mando, but it's not accurate to Jango's armor. <laughs> the helmet but, uh, is. Maybe the eh, maybe the helmet, but the the chest and stuff certainly isn't, um, unless it was like damaged so bad that he had it like reshaped or something. Mm. Uh, and that is that's all of our super Alex, chat. It was hey, the Alex. stormtrooper riding the Jew back in the special edition. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I've I've heard a couple of people here mention um, uh, Dengar. Yes, as mm -hmm. one of the characters, and I was just thinking. You know, with the COVID-induced toilet paper shortage, they can't make his costume. <laughs> there's, and there's not that, enough. Uh, or, or, or maybe that's why the world has run out of toilet paper, because Lucasfilm are making an Denga. army of Dengars. Yeah. I would love it if they uh, gave him Simon Pegg's voice like they did in Clone Wars. Um, okay. So, they, would, they probably would. Yeah. And that guy used to crap all over Star Wars, and then his buddy JJ got the gig, and he stopped. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get into our top three. Uh, we got about twenty or so minutes left. Um, mm -hmm. Tony, what's your number three favorite addition to the collection of twenty twenty one? This is a really, really unusual piece. Um, I didn't know of this before but um when when bobby turned me into desert rat he actually did something psychological to me where i just became obsessed with having the biggest and best desert rat collection in the world so when i discovered that there is an action man bubble bath set with desert rat on the packaging I just had to get it. And this thing, it turned, I bought this from eBay. It literally turned up two days before this stream, three days ago. Um, it's in beautiful condition. There will be some diehard collectors out there who say that this is not 100% original if the bubble bath is no longer in there. But I actually asked the guy to pour it out before he shipped it because, I A, it would be a lot lighter. Um, but B, I was like, if it leaks in transit, I will be devastated. So just yeah. pour it out and send it without the bubble bath. But you see on the, on the back, there's a beautiful artwork there of Desert Rat, which I believe has been drawn by Dave Barnacle because he did all this, this kind of Action Man style packaging. Um, I've got some original art prints from Dave Barnacle and some autographs from him. Is that a um, Thompson? Does he have a Thompson? Yeah, the original Desert Rat carries a Thompson. Yeah, but the figure carries an M60, doesn't he? In Action Force, in Action Man. In Action Man, yeah, the Thompson, right? Yeah. He's gonna go I've got get one it. right here. I'll show you. Cool. Okay. Um, there we go. Here we go. Cool. You got to grow that beard out now. <laughs> hey, you could put it on any action man figure you wanted. He doesn't have to be bearded. Ah, cool. Wait, the beard is removable? No, you got action man figures with or without beards, and oh, okay. action men weren't specific characters. Yep. You know, you could you got an action man figure and you just dressed him in whatever uniform you had that you wanted to dress him in. Oh, like so. a Barbie. Okay. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Now you're both going to punch me in the face at Joe Fest. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm going to use that dildo you showed at the start of the show. <laughs> oh, God. My heat gun? 
<laughs> Matt, you, you'll the regret that the fact that that's a heat gun because after I stick it where I'm going to stick it and turn it on, you it, it's it's going to be your your internals will be like being inside a sarlacc pit. <laughs> wow! It'll melt stormtroopers. Wow. Man, I, this is a Bobby. I hope your kids aren't watching this show. This is a very hostile podcast. My kids are sleeping, dude. My kids have been sleeping for an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, Bobby, what's your uh, number three? <laughs> My number three is uh, a Mezco. Um, so Ryan has gotten me into Mezcos, and I can't My get apologies. enough of them. My No, apologies. don't apologize. I'm not <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Um, I missed out on this figure pre-ordering it and then saw how amazing it was and had to go and buy one. And it is the Gotham by Gaslight Joker. Um, Ooh, nice. This, Dude, beautiful these, figure. Listen, I cannot get enough of of Mezco figures. Um, everything from like the the wear on his boots to the wear on his pants and his jacket, and then his briefcase with the knife set and the blood on his hands. Like, dude, Mezco is crushing it. I know, like Mezco. I know a lot of people might not consider them like Action Force. Or, or action figures or traditional toys because they're soft goods and they're higher end. But listen, they're six man, inch Barbies. They're six inch listen, Barbies, right? They are absolutely killing it. And I remember when um, when Black Series was first kind of being concepted. I was there, and they were talking about what would what would come with Black Series figures, and they wanted to make Black Series like ultra premium. Like I remember seeing the initial, the original concept model for the Luke and the X-Wing. He had a die cast blaster and he had a die class, a die cast lightsaber hilt. And like that stuff, like that's what they wanted the line to be. And it like, they didn't cost out because retail always wants shit cheaper. So they wanted a $20 figure. So they, you know, they cost reduce it down, but their original goal was premium. And I remember some of the sculpting guys had some Mezcos, early Mezcos. And this was, geez, 2000. 14, 2015 and Mezco wasn't really great back then and they turned it around so fast and they're such a, a like a high quality item now that listen man it would be a dream come true if they contact me and was like listen we want to do action force figures I I would be blown away like I love Mezco stuff so much um, you know and yeah, it's expensive, but if you pre if you, listen, if you get it when they pre order it, it's the sting isn't so bad. Like I paid probably twenty to thirty percent more for this figure because I I missed the pre order. And Ryan sent it to me. And he goes, "You should order this figure," and I didn't. And from now on, every time Ryan tells me I should pre order a Mezco, I'm going to pre order it no matter what. So yeah. um, that that figure is awesome. What they come with is is amazing. It's not like you're just getting a figure. You're getting a figure, a ton of hands, a ton of accessories, kind of some display pieces. The The worst part about Mezco is having so many options to display it. I'm one of those guys that I like to display something and just leave it alone. The yeah, yeah. Joker, he comes with the, the, the trench coat or he comes with the apron and it's like, shoot, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to display him. So, you know, that's, that's the, the rough part, but. Other than that, man, Mezco is killing it. Have yeah. you got the Batman, the, the Gaslight Batman as well? I don't. I'm not a big fan of, of that design, but I really love this Joker. I have um, – see, this figure was a toss-up between the 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 Shadow uh, Edition Batman, which is a really hard one to get. I got that one, and I paid a lot for it. But, man, that figure's cool. But this this Joker just was just a little better. Um I'm a big Jack the Ripper fan. Like I like, you know, uh, like serial killer crime documentary. So if there's ever one on Jack the Ripper, I always watch it. Um, From Hell is really good. So it's like the fact that they modeled Joker off of Jack the Ripper, like it was right up my alley. So, uh, you know. A You're a big fan movie. of Jack the Ripper? I, I just like the the lore of of yep, like serial yep. killer lore and documentaries. I know like they say like oh people that like crime documentaries have like a few screws loose, but like 
me and Alex, man, like Alex, we're, he's always telling me about like crime documentaries. I can't get enough of crime documentaries. Even like when shows come out, true detective season one is probably one of the greatest like shows like ever. Um, yeah. I just like that shit. It's, it's, it's interesting, you know? That, I know that's why I was really, weird, but... no, it's not. I was, that's why I was really drawn to that Joker. Cause same thing, the whole Jack the Ripper thing. I did a, mm -hmm. I did this big book report in high school on him and, and the mystery behind it. And it was just, it's grotesque for sure, but it's, it's fascinating. Um, yeah. Let's do it's some super chats. Like, so I, I think that the, the fascinating part is also why I like the Zodiac killers. Cause they were never caught. So mm -hmm. like, that's the really interesting part. It's like, wait a minute. How did they, they have so many killings that they never got caught. They left so much evidence behind, you know, it's, that's the, the interesting fascination about it. Yeah, uh, Paltrex, just real quick. He says, how are Mezco next to Soap Studios? Mezcos are much higher quality, in my opinion. I don't think the, the, the tailoring on Soap Studios is nearly as good. Um, okay, so my number three is um, the giant action figure I always wanted. It was not cheap. It has light-up features. Boy, I know what this is going to be. It is not the Sentinel. It is the Lewin Atlas 112 scale. Optimus it's like a Prime. child. It is, yeah. Um, his eyes light up. Let me find the button. I thought I put batteries in there. There we go. Check that Ooh. out. Eyes light up. And those are bright, man. Um, he's got he's got like lights everywhere. He's got lights in his feet. He's got lights. Uh, I don't remember where all the switches are. <laughs> but this is fully transformable, fully posable. It was the same price as the Sentinel. And every joint in this thing is ratcheted. Everything. So um, whatever Chinese bootlegging company made this did better than Hasbro at a... Oh, by the way, this is 28 inches tall. The Sentinel is 26 and a quarter, I think. Every finger articulated his i don't have his gun here with me but that lights up the uh, optimus prime blaster lights up um, it's just phenomenal uh, i i had him up on top of my detolfs before i set up my action force display and um i had him in truck mode with snake eyes hanging off the side holding his uzi and it looked awesome man it was so cool he was like hanging off the the driver's side door hanging on to the side view mirror that pops out right there it was it was cool um so I he lost thing. his space in the collection because of action force <laughs> <laughs> i have because I, I was going to ask you if you know this is what your your number three pick does it yeah. bother you that action force makes him look like a pussy <laughs> not at all <laughs> not at all man <laughs> yeah, this is my number three pick. It's just an awesome piece, and he was act he actually costs less than the MP forty four, I think, which is a <clears throat> probably like a one eighteen scale Optimus Prime. But that one has the trailer. A trailer for this thing would be massive. Does like, he I was a few people in the chat fun, asking right? Ryan um, what what company makes it? This is Lewin L E W I N Atlas O P. Lewin, Lewin Resources Atlas OP, something like that. I, I'm pretty sure it's third party or, yeah. or knockoff. I think it's actually a, an upscaled MP10, Masterpiece 10, I think. This I'm he, not, he's in Transform, right? He's fully transformable. Really? I can put him in, yeah. He is a, you transform him and he's a 112, 110 scale uh, Peterbilt. Wow. Just like the cartoon, yeah. Uh, I might have Ken, to get one. Kenmore? No, it's he, Optimus he's is a Peter. He's a Peter built. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I might have to get one. I wanted to get the this the I think it's I forget who makes it the the gentle giant or the the iron giant the big big one. But oh yeah. I might have to get that instead. I isn't the iron giant Mondo? Mondo, yeah, that's right. I have the Mondo iron giant. It's great. Is it really? Is it really yeah, good? Yeah, it's really good. Um. This is, it was Lewin 01 Atlas, Sunny Fresh. Okay, 
this one is the re-release that doesn't have all the chrome, which I actually prefer. I thought the, the first release was like um, the chrome was over overdone. Like Optimus doesn't need a chromed out grill. Um, but yeah, so that that's my number three. It's awesome. Uh, so uh, let's get to some super chats. We got a couple here. Yeah. Uh, Wolfie seven six two. Thank you, man. He says Tony is the fragrance of that bubble bath the same as what my uniforms I wore over there smell like? Kind of a burning oil smell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I know what you mean about that burning oil smell, but uh, I I, I could honestly tell, I haven't wanted to take this out of the package. So the actual bottle itself, back in the late seventies in Action Man, they did do a whole series of like role play toys for children. Um, Action Man themed. I've got a few of them. Um, they had like um, the a plastic version of like the metal um, mess kit that would fold out and you could cook your meal on a, on a burner. I've got one of those. I've got a, a small Action Man red beret with the badge on it and stuff. So this is actually done like a, um, a plastic role play water bottle for kids with Action Man logo kind of embossed into the middle of it. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know what it smells like. I haven't opened it. This box is beautiful. That's awesome. It's it, This is going to be one of my favorite Desert Rat pieces. But by this point in time, that bubble bath would be like the Xenomorph blood. It would, like, melt through your floor and your <laughs> skin and... Uh, Jim Largo, thank you very much. He says, "All hail three POA." Love it. Uh, thank you, enjoying, Jim. yeah, enjoying starting the year with y'all, Bobby. Will we learn anything more about the Crimson Shadows in 2022? Yes. Yes. In comic book form. Um. Uh, uh, yes. Issue six, the Tim Kennedy issue, gives a bunch of backstory on Crimson Shadow, and um. Crimson Shadow plays a decent part in the movie, and there's going to be more, definitely more Crimson Shadow coming. Um, quick what aside. people want to know, Bobby, is am I going to play a decent part in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> or are you actually going to get a real actor? <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're in the second movie. You're not in the first movie. I, I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm just ripping the piss. <laughs> uh, Quick aside, since you brought up Tim Kennedy, if if the listeners haven't seen it, go to the Valiverse channel after this stream and watch the latest video mm -hmm. of Bobby and Tim Kennedy talking about the Duster action figure. It is awesome. I've been um, waiting so long video. to show that because we filmed that in June. I went down there yeah. uh, and it's like I showed the teaser at Joe Fest that we put together, but I knew like we had this this great video of me and him, like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, that shows like how cool Tim is and how like, you know, down to earth and, you know, how excited he was for this figure. Um, you know, so it was, I, I knew I was like, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to get this out so I can like, you know, show that video. So um, it, it's exciting to like put that out there and uh, it's getting a lot of views and people are really digging it. So it's fun. We have a lot of other stuff that we film too. Uh, that Tim's going to be sharing on his social media, uh, so that's that's really exciting, um, you know, coming. But you know, it's it's cool, man. It's cool to like think back on that and like like whoa, I was hanging out with Tim Kennedy. And the crazy thing is that I never met him up until that day, and like I got there to that that gym, and like we started filming within like twenty minutes. So it was like. I was like still kind of like starstruck a bit, you know, me being a huge UFC fan and being a Tim Kennedy fan. And then like, it I comes talked across to in the video. I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> huh? it comes across in the video, but that, that makes it all the better. Man, I've watched that like five times. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Just, just his energy and your energy and, um, um you know, the, the editing and yeah, it was really good. Remember when he's talking about the knife on his vest? And then he hits me in the chest. Yeah. yeah. He hit me. And I was like, damn. And yeah. it's like, he's used to just hitting big guys. Like he, all his friends, the guys he trains with, they're all big guys. So it's like, here, I come in there and it's like, 
he hit me and I think he hit me like twice. And I was like, wow, I just got hit by Tim Kennedy. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> if, 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 if you want to see Bobby suppressing his, like this fanboy reaction, I mean, you're really, <laughs> it's really like, you know, like a, like a 12 year old kid, like meeting his hero. It'd be like me at 12 meeting Mark Hamill. That was what this video was like. And it was awesome, man. It was, it was so cool to see that. Um, look, look, and, and, if, if you don't like Tim Kennedy after that video, I can't help you because that guy is <laughs> awesome, dude. I love that dude, man. <laughs> look, if you um, as much as much as I'd lo love to take the piss, as you know, I do. Um, I I wouldn't say what I was seeing on Bobby's face was fanboying. It was. I don't want to read fucking too much into this, but like I'm, I'm seeing Bobby's face, and it's the combination of yes, meeting a, a veteran who is also a famous sporting athlete who he's been a fan of for a long time, combined with the fact that he's showing him the figure, the look on Bobby's face to me just smacked of. I've been there before. You're standing there, and you're like. Is this actually fucking happening right now? Yeah. Is this happening right now? Um, and that just made that video all the more watchable, which is why um, even even Grace has watched it and she's like she's buzzing. Um, yeah, great great video. I sh I shared that on. I share a lot of stuff on the Analog Toys Facebook page. I don't share a lot of stuff on my personal page. I barely share anything about analog toys on the personal, but I shared that video on my personal page. I was like, man, you, you guys have got to go and see this. So, Thanks, yeah, man. you, Bobby, you did hold it together really well. Like, it, it was, it's, dude, a, listen, it's just a great we, video. I, I had my, my best friend with me. He took the trip with me down there. And um, I told him, I said, just, you know, take pictures and film. Tim had his filming that. My buddy was just kind of like, you know, up and we're, you know, we're, we're, and his guy was getting, you know, the camera set up and we were just kind of standing around admiring this dollar gym. And all of a sudden, Tim like rips off his shirt and then puts an action force shirt on. And I was like, I said to my friend, I was like, dude, he's got an action force shirt on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was just like a total like fanboy moment. My friend, yeah, dude, you brought it for him. Like <laughs> That's awesome. it was just one of those things. We were there, you know, we were there through this film and we like the first day. Uh, and Bobby, Bobby, after, Bobby, you're you're what? roboting a little bit. Oh. Hold on. Yeah. Me, it it was sorry. getting kind of hard to hear what you were saying. Hold on, let me make sure I'm good. Which is am which I, is real shiny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're now? back. Go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Miss. What do you mean? Now it's Miss. He cut out again. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> we heard that. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, am I good now? Um, am I good now? No. Shit. Almost. No, yeah, it's it's coming back. Hold on. No, I think you're good. He uh, says uh, yeah. as we completely lose him. Well, hold, uh, on, well, on. Real, hold real, on. real quick. No, hold okay. on, real quick. I'm just going to read the super yeah. chat. Andrew Sabina says, Ryan, is that Optimus still available? And any tips on what to tell the missus when it arrives? It's on showzstore.com, and I put the link in the chat. I, I think it's still available, but that's where I got it, showzstore.com. And we've got here a world made of cardboard. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, I thought Tony was going to say he took a long, mm -hmm. hot bath in his desert wrap bubble bath. Um, I, I, I shower, um, I have a bath in the house, which I don't think I've ever used. I've lived in this house for three and a half years. I don't think I've ever had a bath. Sorry, Bobby, Tim Kennedy. He's wearing an action force shirt. You're erect. Go on. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I, I said to my friend, I was like, dude, he's wearing an action force shirt. And my buddy's like. Yeah, you brought it for him. But it was still like one of those like fanboy moments, like just seeing him like put on an action force shirt. And then like we were there for like three days filming. And you know, after we filmed at the gym, 
He's like, all right, come back to my house, you know? And I'm like, well, we're going to like Tim Kennedy's house. And then we're out in the parking lot and he's like, here's the, actually he goes, what's your number? I'll text you the address. And I'm like, uh, Tim Kennedy's like going to text me. Like, you know, it was like just stupid (laughs) fanboy moments like that. Um, and then the next day, like his house has a parking lot. Huh? His house has a parking lot. No, we we're out after the like we left the gym. We we're out in the parking lot, and he was like telling me the address of his house, and he's like, "I'll just text it to you." And then, okay, you know, now I feel like a fucking idiot. <laughs> but, but, it's, but, but his house. You were talking about his house, and then you said you're out in the parking lot. You no, know, I know, I know. I, I kind of like went all over the place. Um, his house is gorgeous uh, in Texas. It's it's awesome. And then the next day, we go early in the morning to like start filming at the range, but we had to go and, and meet him at his house first. And then we we're going to follow him to the range. And if you guys have seen his Instagram, he's a big muscular dude. So he doesn't really give a shit about what he looks like. He wears like short shorts, like really like short shorts. And we got there at like, I don't know, 9am and he answers the door and he's got no shirt on and like short, short shorts. And I'm just like, Jesus. He goes, Hey, you guys want some coffee? And I'm like, uh, okay. Like, you know, it's just like, <laughs> this is funny. We were, then we're like in his house and it's like, I see like his Instagram videos. I'm like, I've been in that room. Um, you know, he's got thousands and thousands of boxes of ammo, like all over the place. I'm like, this is fucking cool. I like uh, his style. <laughs> it was, it was a really, really cool trip. I, I loved like every second of it. Awesome, man. That's great to hear. Um, Okay, we're going a little over time, but we're going to get through our last two. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think we need to say anything more about the Book of Boba Fett other than that. Yeah, no. I, I, I hope I think... it goes somewhere interesting. It does have the potential. Um, but I was um, – I wouldn't say disappointed with the first episode, but it weren't great. Yeah. I, and like, I'm going like to give it a before, chance, though. Yeah, I'm definitely giving it a chance. Um Boba Fett's one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. And like I said, didn't dislike it. It was just like vanilla ice cream. And that was right yeah. after the banana split of the season finale of Mando season two. So, um, but yeah, I think it'll pick up. So, um, so let's get into our number two addition to our collection of 2021. And uh, Tony, we'll start with you again, man. What is it? So... This is another donation, um, or this was a gift. I'll say this is not, not a donation. This was a gift um, that I received this year from one of my dearest friends, Michael French. You might have heard of him. He's got this awesome YouTube channel called Retro Blasting. Um, and I was absolutely floored when he sent me this. He sent me a near mint and complete. Hold on a second. Marion Ravenwood from the Indiana, the vintage Kenner Indiana Jones line, which completes my collection. I did used to have this figure. I traded it with someone for a removable cow. Mego Batman. I've always regretted it, but the one that I had was not complete. It didn't have the unique figure stand because her feet are so small. She can't stand up without the figure stand. And Michael sent me this insanely beautiful and generous gift. And it, it completed an entire collection for me. Um, I have got literally, I've got all three of the vintage LJN figures from the temple of doom. I've got the whole collection of, the Adventures of Indiana Jones from, from Kenner, um, now that I, I have this piece. So, um, you know, and the fact that it came from such an awesome guy and such a good friend, um, I'm, I'm excited. And, and speaking of Indiana Jones, I think the next video you're going to see from Retro Blasting, I'm appearing in where he's talking about the Hasbro era of uh, Indiana Jones toys. So, cool. great piece. Very, very happy. That's got to be a, a very cool feeling that a modern collector like me doesn't really experience very often. Like I have the complete collection now, you know, I mean like with Marvel legends, there's always 
the next Marvel Legend. Mm-hmm. And when you complete a team, there's always like, oh, well, we got this new Jim Lee Wolverine that's even better, right? <laughs> and so are you ever really complete as a modern collector? Well, you but see, I, I, guy, I collect a lot of a lot of different stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, so many of the collections I have are incomplete and I'm trying to complete. But even when I complete a collection, I normally take on something else. But I know guys who t- take vintage Star Wars, for example, right? I know guys who only collect vintage Star Wars. When they complete a collection, then they start going, well, I want every different version of Luke Skywalker. I want the blonde hair. I want the orange hair. I want all the different country of origin stamps. And that kind of collecting to me I, is, I feel, a little bit obsessive. I've never been a person who just wants to have to see Hong Kong, Taiwan, China on the back of somebody's leg because you put yeah. them in the shelf and unless you display them all like facing backwards so you can look at the coup, what's the what's the point? Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it is a very, very nice feeling completing a, a – certainly a collection like that that was, you know – this limited run, it was it's a great toy line, that Kenner Indiana mm. Jones line. And um yeah, finally having a complete Marion Ravenwood um that was gifted to me by a good friend. One of my highlights of uh, 2021. That's awesome. Very cool. All right, Bobby, you're up, man. Number two. My number two was a gift from Tony Roberts himself. And it is one of the prized things in my collection. And it is a <gasps> hand painted. I totally forgot about that. Of a Q Force Aqua Trooper. This was uh, Tony, who painted this? Uh, Brian Turner painted Brian that. Turner, one of the designers so that, that of the is, toy. That is it. So prior to being a designer, he was the display manager. So he would like set everything up for um, for Toy Fair and stuff like that. But he started to move into design towards the late seventies. So what that is there? That's an original orange Frogman from the nineteen eighty two Action Force. And when they were developing the different color concepts for what Q Force would look like in nineteen eighty three, uh, yeah, Brian. Uh, took one of those orange frogmen from the first line and he's painted it all up and you can sit, clearly see that that's yeah. all hand painted. There's chips off the paint and everything. And um, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's I'm, a, I'm, I'm very pleased that, that you've got that Bobby. That's awesome. Uh, when you sent it to me, I was blown away. I didn't, I looked at it for like an hour. I was like, this thing is awesome to like, you know, it's like, I have a lot of, vintage gi joe prototypes but like to get something that was from across the pond it's like this is awesome you know and the journey this thing took to get to me you know and then it's like yeah you saw my room tour it's like over here is modern action force over there on that wall is all vintage action force so it's over there so it's in this room um so i see it every day when i'm here um, it's such a cool piece. It really is. Uh, it, it, I, I love and, it. Man. I, was, I was so thankful that you sent it to me, man. You're awesome. <laughs> no, you're awesome. So are oh, you, Ryan. Stop it. Stop. stop. Can, we, can we get three rooms at Joe Fest with adjoining doors? <laughs> and, and Ryan, make sure you bring that heat gun. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Now, I, I actually don't know if I've told you this whole story about that piece right brian turner had um i'm trying to think how this came about bob bob region had seen one of my videos or live streams where i was actually talking about um uh ken and ghostbusters figures <laughs> we are we are thank you terry <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's got the hair and me and Bobby are the eye candy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what? Like... <laughs> it's okay. All right, you, so Ghostbusters. You've both, you both got beards. You've got awesome I've got nothing here. <laughs> um, it is a three-way man crush going on here, Ocran's razor. <laughs> oh, Ocran's razor. <laughs> No, so I, I'd mentioned something about some some Kenner real Ghostbusters figure, right? 
figures and that I was trying to build up this collection for a video. And um, and Bob Brinkin got in touch with me and said, if I use a pants and... <laughs> I should have got a different heat gun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can actually get some that look like guns, and you know, like... this is this is karma for showing that heat gun in the beginning, motherfucker. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Take that. Fine, I deserve oh. it. I deserve it. <laughs> All right, free pay. Tim Kennedy versus Desert Rat, unless. The competition is a game of noughts and crosses. <laughs> this will never ever happen because Tim has dedicated his life to being Captain America. I served with pride and dignity for a number of years, and then I got out and I went, fuck this, I'm gonna let myself go. Having said that, I went for a five kilometer run this morning. Because it is the new year. I have never made a New Year's resolution in my life. 2022 is the first time ever when I said that if I'm going to go to Joe Fest and represent this brand as Desert Rat, I don't want to look like Timor Morrison in the Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be jacked like Tim Kennedy because I have never been jacked in my life. But I have been incredibly physically fit. And I've got a big beer gut to lose. So um, I went on off on a big tangent there. Where did I start with that? Something about remember. Ghostbusters and Bob Reakin. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, because I've got to tell you this full story, right? Bob messages me and says, look, Brian's grandchildren have, you know, grown up a little bit. They've kind of got out of toys. He's wants to sell their toys just to give them a little bit of like teenage pocket money. Um, Bob's like, you know, we wanted to offer it to you, but we kind of don't know what's there. And he sent me a photo of, of, of the box and that I didn't see that in the photo. And it was, you know, the Ghostbusters were a little bit beat up, but there was some action force figures in there. And I was like, well, what does he want? And he was like, look, you know, if you offer them, 20 quid each so i think the two grandchildren they'd be happy with that and i was like well let's let's make it 30 quid each you know because it was i'm talking incomplete five poa figures and whatnot and then the stuff turns up and in the bottom of the box i'm like this ain't no normal action figure so i get back in touch with them and say bob ryan this isn't a normal action figure did one of your grandkids paint this? And Brian was like, oh, no, no, no. I, I, and then he told me the story. of it. I, I painted this when I was, when at Palatoy we were doing colour concepts for the for the teams when they went from the 82 range to the new range. And and I'm like, I can't, I can't give you 30 pound each to your grandchildren for this. And he's like, no, you do what you want with it. So this rare, rare piece was rescued from a grandchild's toy bin. Um, cool. And now it is with the current owner of Action Force. And I think that is a tremendously happy story to close out 2021. It's That's 2022, cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's always it's always awesome when a collectible, you know, has a awesome story behind it like yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And the the vintage stuff, it's like there's a lot of vintage stuff that has stories behind it, which is really cool. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Um okay. Ryan, I am really really interested in your number 2, so I'll be yes. listening, but pee break. <laughs> okay. Uh, my number two, and we limited ourselves to one Action Force figure, uh, Valiver's Action Force figure, because, um, I mean, I'll, I'll admit it, I'm probably a little biased, right? You know? Um, but I can't understate how just well-made and awesome this figure is. Um, my number two is Steel Brigade. And when I backed the Kickstarter and I first bought these figures, I was like, man, that Karak. 
that Carrick is so cool. Like, I think that's my favorite one. And I was so looking forward to, get, to getting Carrick. And Carrick's a great figure, no doubt. Um, but as I was posing and playing with these these Steel Brigades, I I totally fell in love, man. It, it's just an awesome design, awesome concept. I love that they're like an elite squad, an elite team. Uh, posability is great. I love that gold head. I actually got two of them. My second one is uh, boxed up and it's on eBay right now. Uh, but this, <laughs> I'm kidding. Better no, get a good not. price for it. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Um, it's just an awesome figure, man. Uh, it, all, all the figures come with the gun cradling hand and the correctly articulated weapons holding hand. Um, but it, it it's just. Hey, so show, cool, show me which way the mags are in the pouch. Oh, I don't know. I, they're the way they were in the box. Is that the right way? Oh. Did you even watch my video, bro? I did. Yeah, I know. They're going to be upside down and backwards or something, right? So you don't have to yeah. re change your grip on it while you're switching mags. Mm -hmm. Let me just flip that around. There we go. I'm flipping the other one around. But yeah, it's a great figure. And, um, you know, the uh, I can't get uh, There we go. I got it out. Got these fat fingers. Um, is that better? Yes, okay. that's better. I got the thumbs up approval from Desert Rat. There we go. Um, I got five of them so far, and I got two more coming. So I'm going to have my squad of seven. Awesome figure. Seven. Yeah. It's a good squad. I got five in the Kickstarter, and I ordered two more. And I think I have one on pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store. Hey, Bobby, when's Big Bad Toy Store shipping? Uh, hmm, let's see. I haven't gotten this question <laughs> in about, I don't know, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, we. he doesn't know when Big Bad Toy Store is shipping. They got their own container coming from China. So They have their own carrier, their own carrier, pick their container up from the factory, and that, that's that's it. It's out of my hands, man. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably end up with eight of these. Just know, from here on out, I will always get my product first. Always. No one will get Action Force product before me. So if you're going to pre-order, Big Bad is a great partner. I love working with them. I will always get the product first. That's awesome. That's the way it should be. If only yep. uh, Hasbro Pulse got their product first. <laughs> <laughs> They're always dead last, man. <laughs> So that's my can, number two. Can, can I can I just say to to the people who are ranting and raving and getting all impatient? I I understand you're passionate about the line. I'm not going to insult anybody here. I understand that you're passionate about the line, and you know that fear of missing out that we talk about with the rancor and stuff like that. There is also an element of the fear of missing out of you know, not being the first person to get it and everything. But at the same time, if you are in love with this line and you actually read the comics and you understand the kind of characters that these people are, people like Condor, do you think Condor, if he was pre-ordering Bone Collector and Carrick from Bobby, do you think Laird Barnes would be blowing up Bobby's inbox without wanting updates, he'd be like, bro, I was past Special Forces selection. I was interrogated for 36 hours. They kicked the shit out of me. They tortured me with white noise and stress positions, and uh, and I'm going to throw my toys out of the pram because I'm getting get my action figures two weeks later than everybody else. Have some perspective is all I'm saying. Well, hey, you know what? To be fair... To be fair to the customer, not all of them are watching this show, right? Yeah, yeah. And and not yeah. all of them, maybe they're not on social media, they're not following Valivers, this and that. Um, but yeah, if you are watching this show and following Valivers, you should probably know by now. Um, and look, I I've been ordering from Big Bad for years. Um, they're all they're always after Dorkside and Entertainment Earth and and it, big listen. big 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 Bad is a great retailer. But I know they're not going to be shipping first. 
And it's like there's there's perks that come with either or. It's like, listen, Big Bad has the $4 flat rate, the pile of loot. It's like, you know, every, everyone's got a better standard, you know? So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, listen, if you're one of those people that – you have to have it first. Otherwise you're going to lose your mind. Order from me, man. But you know, the, listen again, big bad is a great partner. And li- I don't want people going out. Like when I get messages from people saying this, I get very mad about it. Do not tell me that you canceled your big bad order to order from me. I appreciate yeah. that you, you, you want to order directly from me. Or if you think I'm making more money off of it, whatever, do not, they are a great partner. And if you cancel your order, it affects my relationship with them. So please do not cancel your Big Bad order to order through me. You order with Big Bad, you 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 know, uh, you know made that order knowing that you were going to keep it. Do not cancel it. Please do not. It hurts. It hurts our relationship with them. Just, just wait a little longer. It will get there. Yeah, I would say, I mean, there's lots of army builders in this line. Just order one more from Valiverse. Just, you can get that yeah. one in your hand and yeah. then get the rest from Big Bad. Um, if you can afford it. I'm not trying to tell people to spend money they don't have. Um, so, uh looks like Tony's taking a little break. So, uh, let's get into our number one because we're, like, way over time by now. Yeah. But, yeah. but first, let's get to a super chat. Uh Crash, thank you very much, man. He says, Happy New Year 3 POA. Looking forward to what's coming from Veliverse in 22. FYI, speaking of aging well, Fennec is one month older than Jennifer Beals. And that can't be understated because Ming Na wow. Wen looks incredibly young for her age. And mm-hmm. yeah, she's another uh, very attractive woman. <laughs> um, thank you very much, uh, Crash. I'm sorry I called you trash that one time. Um, it's a funny spelling of your name. And then we got one from, I got to find it here. Here we go. World made of cardboard. Thanks, man. He says, I was able to get my wife her desert rat figure. She wants to display it with her Doctor Who figures. Tony versus the Daleks. I've never seen Doctor Who. Did I Neither pronounce that I. right? Okay. Daleks. Uh, thank you. You guys are great. Oh, thank you. World made of cardboard. Daleks. 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 I've never seen the show, and I hope Michael's not listening. He's going to get mad at me. <laughs> he won't get Drew. mad. <laughs> I know. You don't know uh, what you don't know. That's not as Thank bad you, as you, World Made of Cardboard. I, I appreciate the uh, the super chat, and I look forward to the challenge of um, fucking up some Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, bud. Um, all right, so let's get into our number one. And uh, Tony, back to you, man. What's your favorite pickup of 2021? Well, this was a very, very difficult choice for me because we had said originally that um, – what is Alex Sanchez on about in the chat here? I think he's sitting on his phone. <laughs> is he, has he got a cat? His cat walked over his laptop. Oh, um, maybe maybe his new, uh, his new daughter – Oh, maybe, maybe. Old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty young to be playing with a phone, though. She's like thirty days old. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this was a very, very difficult choice for me because we had said in the group chat beforehand that we could only pick one Valiverse Action Force figure because we didn't want our top five to just be, you know, praising Bobby all the way along. So this was a very, very difficult choice. And I was going to subvert audience expectations, but then look what happened to The Last Jedi when you do that. Yeah, don't do that. (laughs) Seriously, do do, do you remember that? I'm I'm sure you do. There's a scene in Commando where Arnold Schwarzenegger is in a motel room and he's fighting Bill Duke. And he turns around and he says, I eat Green Berets for breakfast. (laughs) Well, this guy eats Daleks for breakfast. <laughs> and it is the prototype Condor. Oh, nice. Whoa. Nice. Now, I black. know everyone was expecting me, because I do, I do have him here. Everyone was expecting me to pull out the Desert Rat. 
But I want to tell you the reason why I chose Condor over the Desert Rat. Mm. Because it was, I don't want to be presumptuous, but kind of an inevitability that I would uh, I would get like pre-production samples or something special for Desert Rat. I kind of, you know, Bobby's the kind of guy who would make sure that that happened. But this was totally unexpected. Condor is my favourite character um, in Action Force. Now that I have the figures in hand, I love the Swarm and the Wasp Raider. Um, but this was just a, a mind-blowing experience to receive this, to have this in the collection. I've had to um, order some extra Condor figures because I want to display where... I, I take all my stuff out of the boxes, Bobby, but I need one in box to go with the pro. And the fact that it's the, the paint master from the first Kickstarter where all the colors mm. are different, it's very, very special, man. And it's one of the reasons that I love you with all my heart. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. And it's in all black. So that's like the first design of uh, yeah. Condor? Yeah, Condor was yeah. all black to kind of match the uh, SAS uh, squad. Anti-terrorism. Yeah. Or well, actually, everyone refers to um, the SAS in their all black gear as the anti-terrorism kind of because, um, you know, that's when they did the Iranian embassy siege in May of 1980 in London and all of that kind of thing. It's actually not still today and wasn't back then. It's still not called the anti-terrorism team. It's the CRW, the Counter-Revolutionary Warfare Wing. A little bit of inside SAS knowledge for you there. The Counter-Revolutionary Warfare Wing is when they do all of their domestic counter-terrorism operations. Just as a really quick aside, speaking of that that uh, first version of Condor, uh, last year probably spring of 2020 i bought some prints from you bobby on valiverse.com and i think i bought three but you stuck a few extra in there and i did not notice until a couple days ago that the condor you stuck in there which is the second one you can't even see it it's like right there yeah, yeah. that condor that's the first version in black Signed by Ron Rudat. I did not notice that until a few days ago. And so that was like, I was like, I texted Bobby immediately. I'm like, you sent me a signed copy of this Condor print by Ron Have Rudat. you got any more? I do. Yeah. Are they available for sale on the website? I got you covered. There you go. <laughs> I, took, I took all the prints down from the site just because I wanted to just leave the comics and the figures up for now. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I got you covered. That sign print would have been on my list, but I got it in 2020, so didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're way over time, so let's get into our number ones. Uh, Tony, when you're done, I just did my number one. It's Bobby's turn. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, Bobby, what's your number? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, actually, can I go last? Ryan, you go. I need okay. to take a wicked bad piss. All right. So you know, I'm a, <laughs> okay. a wicked pisser. <laughs> I thought he was from Jersey, not Boston. Um, okay, he's, so my he's, number he's one. He's pissing out Sarlacc stomach acid. <laughs> <laughs> my number one is not only one of my favorite characters of all time from early, early childhood, um, but it's also an excellently designed uh, and engineered figure. Um, some of my earliest memories, even before Star Wars, was watching – Christopher Reeve as Superman. Um, to this day, I get chills when I hear the theme song. Um, and watching the movies, you know, you think of Christopher Reeves, I'll, I'll start welling up a little bit, you know. Just he was like yeah. the childhood hero, like like him and Luke Skywalker were like it for me as a kid. Um, this is not a Christopher Reeve Superman, but it is a Superman, and it's the best Superman in my collection. I have quite a few. Uh, this is the Moffex Hush. Superman, and it is just amazing. I, I have one nitpick. I mean, this is nearly a perfect figure for me, and I have no perfect figures in my collection. 
Um, my one nitpick is that the yellows are a little dull. Uh, maybe it's not coming across yeah. on camera very well, but they're no, little... it, it, it is right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, the yellows are a little muted, but um, just the the poses that I can achieve with this figure and the look of it, it's totally a, a, a comic book accurate Superman. It's technically a hush version of Superman from the hush comic book storyline. Um, and I, I got this early in the year, and it's it's still my number one. I love this figure. <laughs> it, it it it's great. If if you haven't if you didn't get it and you really want a, a really good Superman, this is the one to get. I apologize though. Secondary market prices are really really high. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're over two hundred dollars. Can you or show us the cape? Be... Can you show me the cape? The cape. Oh, so is... it's got the yellow S on the cape and everything. Yep. Yes. Soft goods with a wire, so you can pose the cape. Gorgeous. Um, it it's an excellent figure. Uh, if you're a little patient, I'm sure Moffex will eventually put out another Superman. Maybe not this exact version. I know they have a Dark Knight Returns uh, Superman coming out relatively soon, but that's obviously Frank Miller styled. You know, very large and uh, buff. Um, but this is this is when I got this. This was like my dream Superman figure. It one yeah. of one of my favorite figures in my collection. So. That's my number one for 2021, the Moffix Hush Superman. I'm enjoying Drew Jim's <sighs> comment here. He says, I'm yeah, loving the balls nice. on Ryan for telling Bobby that Steel Brigade is in second place. <laughs> listen, I, I, I don't want any – listen, I, I, there's, so, there's so many great figures and so many great purchases out there. Like, even – like, listen, I, I'm thankful that my stuff is even appearing on their list at all. Um, hey, li listen, this is a $100 figure. This is a $30 figure, okay? And I never had a Steel Brigade as a kid. I didn't know what Steel Brigade is until the first Kickstarter of Action Force. So there's a lot of nostalgia, history um, with me and Superman. So he kind of had to take number one. Don't make excuses, Ryan. You did start <laughs> the show by showing your runner-up. <laughs> that thing is so phallic. <laughs> it is so valid, dude. Stupid Amazon. Well, here's a question for you, Bobby. And and the the, re the reason I bring this up is I've wanted to ask you o over time about will there ever be anything cloth goods in Valiverse Action Force? The first cloth goods thing I want to do is a ghillie suit. Oh, cool. That's a good yeah. idea. Not I mean, a parachute? Uh, no. I mean, it's hard to display a parachute. Like, you know. Unless um, it was wired. Yeah. Plus, it's like a parachute. You're just jumping on a plane and you're waiting until you hit the ground. Like, yeah, I guess God, there's, there's images of guys shooting from their parachute. But it's not like, it's not a very action kind of thing. Um, a ghillie suit is so cool and like, you know, snipers are just awesome. So that's definitely the first thing I want to do soft goods related. Snipers are awesome, but they also have the most boring job. They do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Bobby, what is so your number one? My, my number one is, uh, the completion of a vintage collection. So like Tony's Marion. Uh, this was something that I had been looking for for quite a while, and I had seen it uh, many times at a show, and finally pulled the trigger on it. And it is the, <gasps> the Titans Kraken. So he does he does have his tail. I just don't have it on. Um, this was done by Mattel. Don't, in, don't put it on your blanket. Yeah. It is, I think I've said it before, it's one of the most fragile figures ever made. Like, I don't have the arms up. Like, you don't even want to look at this thing wrong. It is made out of very, very brittle ABS plastic. And finding one complete and unbroken is like finding the fucking Ark of the Covenant. Like, um, So even like when I bought this, uh, I saw this at a show... Uh, I think twice before this where a guy was selling it 
And this was like three or four years ago. He was selling it, and then I saw it the next year, and he was still selling it, but he upped the price. And I'm like, well, why would you up the price if he still didn't sell it yet? Then it's like COVID happened, and then this past year, I went to the show, and he had it. And I, I kind of went to the show knowing he was going to have it because he always had it. And I was like, he probably didn't sell it, and it, it, I need it. I have the whole entire Clash of the Titans set, and he was the last thing I needed. And I got there, and he had it. And I went back and forth with price and I actually left the show, thought about it, stopped at the ATM, went back to the show and then got him down on the price. But like he was putting it in the box and I'm like, I'm just letting you know, if you break it, putting it in the box, the deal is off because it's literally that fragile. Like I don't even want to move his arms. He's displayed just like this, not moving, not no arms up, no nothing because he has to stay just like this. Um, and I love Clash of the Titans. It's one of my all-time like favorite vintage movies. And I got the big you know, uh, uh, one-sheet poster out there in my office. Yeah. Um, I just love it. And the Kraken was so iconic in that movie. And, he, you know, he's huge. Like, seeing one in person, like, he's huge. You see how big he is compared to the, you know, the three and three-quarter inch figures. Um, and Clash of the Titans was the first movie i ever watched on home video my parents i came home from school one day and my my older brother was buzzing because we had a betamax video recorder i didn't know what the hell video was and my brother was like well you know how you watch a movie on tv and then Mm -hmm. it finishes and you can't watch it again he's like you can rewind it and watch it again and pause it and i was like oh and my parents had rented Clash of the Titans, and I think Flash Gordon, the 1980 Flash Gordon movie. First thing I ever watched it at home on home video, and I watched it five times. Great film. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. So, yeah, this was like my my holy grail uh, for the time being. I started collecting vintage Star Wars again, so let's see what happens there. But um, this is this is the guy, man. This Kraken is is like, it's so cool, you know. Have you got all the figures to go with it? I think you have. I have, every, I have, I have everything. I have the whole run, yeah. and, and all unbroken. Like, um, I have Calabas with the unbroken tail. And yeah, with, which is very hard to get like that. Yeah, right? yeah. My Pegasus is unbroken and all white. So, you know, getting this guy was the last piece of the puzzle, and he was half the puzzle. So, yeah, it's like. I can't even like look like I don't want to look at him. I just want to push him over there and just <laughs> you know. even carrying him into this room. I was nervous. So yeah, yeah, man, that's fragile. <laughs> oh, dude, so brittle. I got a question here for you, Bobby, real quick. Yep, Jesse says, Bobby, is there any chance of getting Desert Rat figure in a dress uniform? So can I go ahead? So in the special forces, right? We don't we don't wear dress uniform very often. We don't do parades. Remembrance Day for us, we put on a black suit and tie, and we go to a church, and then we go to the pub and we get drunk. The only time we wear dress uniform is pretty much for funerals, and for that reason alone, I don't want that. Makes sense. And I have to approve of any uh, design concepts for uh, for Desert Rat. So. The fuck you don't. Hey. <laughs> the, well, the other reason why I wouldn't do dress uniforms is the same reason that you won't see a dress blues gung ho figure anymore. Is the Marines have that 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 design. They have a copyright on that design, like that dress blues uniform. So if you wanted to do a dress blues gung-ho, you'd have to pay a royalty to the U.S. Marines for that. So dress... I don't think the British military have the same issue, but... Oh, no? Okay. I just no. I just assume just because the other branches of the military do. So, All right. Seriously? I, I remember reading that contract. I thought I had to a- a- approve of designs. Yeah, that's all bullshit. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Desert Rat version three comes with a whiskey bottle and he's naked in 
apart from a Borat mankini. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, what I really want to do is I want to do the fishing desert rat is what I want to do. Mm. Yeah, that would be barefoot and everything. Yep. Yep. Be wow. Cool. You you want to do that? No. <laughs> 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 all right well apologies for going way over time but uh, thank you for sticking around and checking out the whole show hope you enjoyed it um that's our top five of 2021 and our thoughts on book of boba fett we'll probably revisit book of boba fett after the, se the season finale in a couple months or so give our yeah thoughts we, on the won't, series we won't yeah we won't be reviewing it like every yeah. two weeks go We'll we'll come back and we'll we'll look at the series as a whole. Yeah. Right. Um our next show in two weeks on January fifteenth, um, we're gonna have a guest, our second guest, and that's gonna yeah. be Talker Art. Uh he's a YouTube toy reviewer. Uh he's a really funny guy. Um check out his channel if you haven't. He he reviews <clears throat> modern figures. Um, so if you're like a vintage guy, uh it's still worth checking out because like I said, he's he's really, really funny. Uh, but he's going to hang out with us on the 15th, um, hopefully. Yeah, let, let, let me just say, if you <laughs> thought that this episode was a little bit fruity, you wait till Talker Art comes on here. <laughs> Listen, you know who should definitely not be watching that episode is Dwight. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> he goes in on Dwight from Hasbro. <laughs> uh, um, who's next Dwight? Dwight's my old boss at Hasbro. He's the, one that runs, he's the one that runs the Marvel Legends team. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know the guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, so saw, I saw him in a, um, a pre-recorded live stream <laughs> um, with a sentinel there and everyone in the chat asking about the, the knees and he just he wouldn't touch the knees. Mm. Yeah. But hey, but hey, shout out to Ryan Ting on the Hasbro uh, Marvel team. He got his Action yep. Force figures in this week. He threw it up on Instagram. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, I saw cool. that. So yeah, maybe maybe fairness, they'll maybe they'll learn in something. In all fairness, in all fairness, Ryan Ting did not pay for those. Those okay. were those were a gift from me. Ryan has sent me a lot of stuff that I worked on after the fact, um, so I have to return the favor and. Uh, send Ryan uh, some Action Force stuff. But I also did it waiting to see if he'd actually post it. And he did. He did. Yeah, he did. So, bravo to I, him. I messaged him and I said, uh, oh, these figures are trash. They don't have ratcheted knees. <laughs> <laughs> and he responded back. He's like, well, I, I saved you the Photoshop. Because <laughs> I, oh. photoshopped, I photoshopped a picture of him from the, li the live stream. Yeah, action force figures all behind him, but uh, yeah. So anyway, so that's uh, that's our episode. Thanks for sticking around for the whole thing, and uh, we'll see you on the fifteenth. Yep, we'll see you on the fifteenth, and I've got a little video to uh, to end the show. Happy New Year, guys! We'll talk to you next time. Action Force will return after these messages. Action Force toys, the battle has just begun. Driver, action force. When the American government fractures and states become independent republics, the threat of new colonia spreads, and only Action Force can stop them. Fearless combat leader Condor teams up with the Steel Brigade and Special Advisor Sergeant Slaughter to battle it out against the terrifying Kerak, the evil bone collector, and a swarm army. In this war, there's no room for nerf, except nothing but the highest caliber. Action Force makes your other figures look like pussies. Use your action points to send away for an exclusive action figure, codename PTSD, complete with thousand yard stare action feature. You want figures with the biggest balls in the business? Then collect your own Action Force today. Figures each sold separately from Bellaverse.